after the Super Bowl. We've got an interview with Karen Parsons, who played Hillary on the original, and a great moment from our vaults with the one and only Will Smith himself. But first, let's see what was going on on today's Pop Start. First up, breaking news here on Popstart. Hot off the press is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced the lineup of nominees for this year's class. Here are some of the names in the running on the ballot for the very first time. Wow. Yes. One and only American Daddy. treasure, the commander of them all, Dolly Parton. Yes. yes. Finally. Uh, Joined by list. Eminem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Savannah, oh, are you listening? Yes. Duran Duran. Yes. My what? Richie, how's yes. that already? I know. Carly, Carly Simon, oh, wow. all of them. and nominated Who once again more, more, is music more. and Twitter icon Diane more. Warwick. Yes, yes. She's joined by fellow artist Pat Benatar. Yes. And how is it taking so long for Beck to get in? What is that? How many should kids? Be there are 17 kids? nominees total oh. this year. Oh, okay. okay. We will find out who gets in oh, when they announce Dolly. them. Come on. Dolly's not in? Well, we're going to find out in May. Wow. Okay. All right, next up, this series looks great on Paramount Plus. It's called The Offer. The new series is heading to Paramount Plus, anyway. It's set to tell the dramatic real life story behind the making of The Godfather. Oh. In the trailer, we get a first look at Miles Teller as award winning producer Albert S. Ruddy and a peek at his desperate fight to get the Mario Puzo iconic gangster novel onto the big screen. This is a story about family. It's Shakespeare. Agencies won't touch us. It's epic. You want to be a producer? Bang, borrow, steal, do whatever it takes. Gangster movies are dead. We will stop out the hatred. If I say I'm going to handle something, I'm going to handle it. And the prejudice. It. You're still going to try to make this thing? Sinatra wants us to shut the picture down. What is our opening line? I believe in America. I mean, it just looks good. Brilliant. 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 You're watching 1883 on Paramount Plus right now. This is going to come yeah. out. They're doing yeah. some good things over there. Show also stars Ted Lasso's Juno Temple. That's who plays Keely. Oh, mm -hmm. Right. She's, uh, she's great in it, too. And American Crime Stories' Colin Hanks is in it. It's a great cast. The Offer is the name of it. And starts streaming oh, on April 28th. I give it a good sell there. It's yeah. real yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. It was earnest. It was okay. hard. Yeah. I like that. Finally, our Super Bowl commercial kickoff all week. We're giving you a sneak peek at some of the biggest ads for the big game. We used to wait for the big game to see all these yeah. ads. Yeah. Yeah. Now we just yeah. get them here. That's it. Roll this morning, we've got a first look at Lay's Potato Chips, their first Super Bowl campaign in 17 years, huh. and it stars the very funny Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen. Here it is. Nervous? Oh, Lay's brings back so many good memories. Remember our road trip in 97? Our first real heart to heart. I've never seen any of your movies. Not even the ones we're in together. Remember when you bought your first house? You ready? Seth, do you? I do. And Janet, do you? That's a yes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Logan actually created that ad with his oh. longtime friend and writing partner, Evan Goldberg. <laughs> they worked together on Super Bad, and this is the end. Oh. And don't forget to tune in, of course, to The Big Game. It's next Sunday, February 13th. Where else? Right here on NBC. And, of course, streaming on Peacock. Awesome. And that is okay. your pop star today. Love it. Let's get to a few more headlines. After all, the show is called Popstar Plus. First up, and just like that, more good news for fans of the new Sex and the City series after revealing that HBO Max will release a behind-the-scenes documentary following Thursday's season finale. Sarah Jessica Parker is giving hope this may not be the end of the new chapter. SJP telling Variety that she and showrunner Michael Patrick King are already talking about a second season. The actress and executive producer sharing in an interview, there feels like there's momentum. As for, the return of Kim, as for the return of Kim Cattrall's character, the beloved Samantha Jones, don't hold your breath, Parker and King both saying there are no plans to bring her back into the story at this time. But maybe later, who knows? Next up, David Letterman, the man who started it all, returned to Late Night on Tuesday to celebrate the show's 40th anniversary with current host Seth Meyers. And taking a look down memory lane, Dave shared how before he landed in the Late Night time slot, he had a short-lived stint hosting during our current Today Show hours. We had blown up the NBC daytime schedule a year right. previously. I, uh, we had a show, a lot of us had a show that we thought was just great. And it was on for 90 minutes live, like 9 to 1030 on, on NBC. And it replaced two or three uh, game shows. And it, it turned out uh, America didn't want them replaced. <laughs> Cer certainly didn't want them replaced by me. But when, when you're Letterman said his daytime show only lasted for a couple of months. A year later, it did land him an 11-year run as the host of Late Night. And those are your headlines up next. Karen Parsons, who played Hillary on the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, shares her favorite moments from the show. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin. The excitement is in the air. Magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering you on. Right. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today, today, today. today. today is where the games begin. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to the thing about Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. In just 11 days, Peacock, of course, part of our parent company, NBC Universal, is going to be releasing the highly anticipated Bel Air. So today we thought we'd take a moment to check out, well, the roots of that reboot. We're going to get a visit from Karen Parsons, who played Hillary on the original show. Here is today's flashback. I think I probably hear the line, Daddy, can I have $300 more than anything? Dad, I need three hundred dollars. <laughs> How would I describe Hillary Banks? You know, it's the way I've described her has changed over the years. I still think she's incredibly self-centered, um, and she's just myopic. You know, she's she's been grown up as Daddy's little girl, first child, and it was a girl. You know, I just imagine that they dressed her up in all kinds of little fancy, little frilly things, and everything she wanted. They you know, they gave her and I have a, my first child was a daughter. So I'm starting to even understand it in that regard. I think I underestimated a lot of things about her. I think she's she's very determined. She's so self-centered and seemingly myopic. But at the same time, she's so she she's very focused and determined and has confidence. You know, the, the confidence we all wish we had. Com if she wants to do something, she knows she can do it. She's going to do it. because That's what she wants. And that's it. And she's going to get it because she always gets what she wants, you know, so it's, nothing stops her. And I think that's a quality of Hillary's that I love and I wish I could have a little bit more of. Um, and I do think that she has a lot more heart. You know, she has a lot more heart than she might always get credit for. <laughs> Look, th there he goes. <laughs> The, the bungee jumping episode will forever be my bittersweet um, episode because I remember when I read the script for the first time, there was this horrible heartbreak of, oh my gosh, Brian Stokes Mitchell's not going to be on the show anymore. Because Brian, who played Trevor, was so wonderful. I loved working with him. I loved the Hillary Trevor romance. <laughs> it was really fun. And so it was horribly disappointing to read like, oh no, you know, it, Trevor's gone, Brian's gone. And then you just see the way it all, how it happened and how it played out. And then of course, that's the, the, the laugh, the part that was so funny. Yes. Yes, what? Yes, your highness. <laughs> I think my favorite episode still for me to do and I liked it how it came out too was in the first season when Hillary drops out of college and is blackmailed by both Will and Carlton you know and when I go to my brother for help um, I'll never forget when we taped that episode and it was the first season and so I didn't know a lot of how the audience was taking Hillary. You know, I hadn't had a lot of feedback from people yet that I was assuming people probably weren't going to like her that much because everyone loved Will and she had this kind of thing with him. And uh, we got to the part where I go to Carlton for help 
and say he's making me, you know, clean his dirty draws or lucky draws or whatever. And he says, will you clean mine? Is he making you clean his room? No. Will you clean mine? <laughs> and when that happened, he turned on me. The audience did not just start clapping. They started stomping in the stands. They started stomping their feet and howling and we were trying to keep a straight face and stay in the scene. And if you see, watch the scene, you can see as they cut back and forth, you can see me kind of smiling and trying to play it off as a, I can't believe you smile <laughs> because I couldn't keep it down. I couldn't believe they hated her so much. They were loving seeing her get hers. I'd like to finish my story if that's okay with you, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, the whole thing, barking like a dog at the table and how we choreographed, put that whole thing together was um was really fun you know i was really lucky to, to get a lot of really funny lines and i forgot how funny they were until like you know recently when i found them as memes and stuff <laughs> one i totally forgot about from the first season that i saw as a meme was um good god who shot the couch good god who shot the couch <laughs> There are so many good ones, like, how do I put this nicely? I'm just too good for you. As long as neither of us are doing anything, why don't we not do it together? Oh, well, that's very sweet, but how can I put this nicely? I'm too good for you. <laughs> you know, there are these just lines that were just, um, her just being honest in her own Hillary way. <laughs> Will! Hill! <laughs> Daddy, I need $500. Like what you see on The Fresh Prince is Will. That is Will, more than any other film you'll see. I remember I saw Shark's Tale, the animated film that he did. And I was telling him, I said, I, was, I saw Shark's Tale and it reminded me, it just made me feel like I was with you so much, like more than anything else I've seen. He said, because in that film, he said, the only other thing besides Shark's Tale where they let me do whatever I wanted was Fresh Prince, just being myself and do what I wanted. So it was like, if he's playing a fish or if he's a will on the will on the first print. That's like, that's really him. Just this big personality, loves to laugh, loves to, is so curious and so intensely bright. You know, he's always, you can see it when you watch him. I mean, I watch if I watch him interview or on something, I still see that laser focused look because his mind is going and all the, everything's like churning and he's, he's always finding excitement in things. And we've got more with Karen in just a moment, including her favorite Fresh Prince guest stars. That's coming up. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. 
And we're back. Karen Parsons starred as Will's cousin Hillary on the original Fresh Prince of Bel Air for six seasons. Here's more now of our conversation about the beloved sitcom. We had so many great guest stars. Um, Zsa Zsa Gabor let me wear her ring all day. That was cool. Um, so I like, she gets points for that. You know, I love that we had Milton Berle on the show, but I never interacted with him. He was apparently real, a real curmudgeon. Um, I love uh, Tom Jones was probably one of my very favorites. I was really excited that Tom Jones was on the show. Um, but my very favorite person to act with hands down was Regis Philbin. All these people on the show, but I will tell you, Regis Philbin, we were talk show hosts. I was co-hosting with the guest hosting with him. And, um, and he's so dry. He was so funny. His timing was incredible. And it was just a real fun game, you know, tossing it back and forth. I would have loved to work with him regularly. You spend more on clothes than most small countries spend on grain. <laughs> I feel like I learned a lot from James as a person and as an actor. That's hard because it's, I feel like it's so much in me and he was so generous. You know, I'll never get over the episode that sticks with so many people that Will, when Will's father left. How come you don't want me, man? And I remember Will really wanted that to work and him going to James and talking to him and, and giving him advice on things and being really helpful in a really quiet way, in a very quiet way. He was not heavy handed about anything like that. Um, but one thing James did that was really beautiful is he he saw things in you that you might not see in yourself and he saw possibilities. He used to really want me to play Lady Macbeth. It made me look at myself differently. It made me look at myself as an actor differently. It, it made you feel, it was nice to be seen, but it was also interesting to, to recognize someone seeing you through a, a very different lens than maybe you saw yourself and credit yourself. And he did that not just with me, you know, with Tatiana, um, he had the same thing about some, something he wanted her to do that he really saw. And I think it, it landed on her or she saw that for herself. And he was just, he was beautiful that way, that he would look at you and say, you know, it's like what you're capable of, you know what you can do, something so different from how you might see yourself. And, um, and it made you kind of expand. Yeah, he was, he was amazing. You know, one of my favorite things about the relationship between the siblings, the whole family, and really just the whole makeup of the, of the family and the cast, including Jeffrey, was how different we all were. We were all from such different personalities. I don't think anybody was like another person in this, this whole cast of characters. And that was really a wonderful thing, especially for a black family on screen. Like whenever I see scenes with Hillary and Ashley, it's like oil and water in a way. Not in a, not in a that they don't that they don't like each other, but that they they're just so different, you know. And Ashley's so kind to her sister, who she feels she's her big sister, but she kind of feels for her because it's almost like somebody dropped Hillary on her head. <laughs> so I kind of the way Ashley speaks to her a little bit, you know, recognizing that she's different and um and i love that you know hillary still feels like whatever she's saying is right and that's just the way the world is i think if, i think hillary now would be the queen of the internet i i have no no doubt she'd be the instagram queen to me that's so obvious i remember once i thought of it once and i was like oh yeah that's where she lives you know and that's what she was made for <laughs> she would own it <laughs> she would own instagram and coming up, Will Smith's visit today in a very 90s getup as Fresh Prince was at its peak. That's coming up in The Vault next. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> Was talking smack part of this? To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. The year was 1991, and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air was all the rage when Will Smith visited today to chat about his role and the show's success. Take a look. Tonight's airing of the NBC comedy Fresh Prince of Bel Air is going to feature back to back segments. And the two segments will be bridged by the premiere of the Prince's newest music video. Will Smith is the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. How you been? Good morning. All right, man. How you doing? All right. First off, why two segments, two episodes in one night? Uh, well, what it is is NBC has been juggling things to, to put behind the show, trying to see what works and, and what happens. Like last week, they had the Cosby Show at 8 and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air at 8.30, just trying to see what happens in the slot. So oh. this, is, this is just something else. Experiment. Just to, yeah, experiment. I saw, I saw recently where you said that y you weren't embarrassed, but that you thought the first few episodes of Fresh <sighs> Prince, your acting was terrible. Is that oh. true? Oh, yes, very much so. I got, I got to around the sixth or the seventh episode, and I was totally new to acting. I had, you know, no formal theatrical training, and this is the, this is the first thing I've, I ever did was the pilot of the show. So, you know, I'm, I'm just giving it my best shot. And then what happens, I'm looking back, and as I'm hanging with actors and things like that, you start to see the different tricks and everything that they do. And I looked at myself, and it was like, ugh. And if you watch the first three episodes, next time they play, I'm lipping everyone's lines. Because I memorized the whole script. I didn't just memorize my lines. So it's like, as you're talking, I'm going. <laughs> waiting for your yeah, yeah waiting you know for waiting for my next one. <laughs> so it's, uh, it was like, Ooh. if I ad lib, I lose you, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm gone. As you watch today, do you, I mean, do you feel totally comfortable with being an actor yet? I'm starting to feel more comfortable. It's just, it's just so many things to learn. And what, like, I, I like Denzel a lot, and and I study people, and it's like when they wipe their head or something like that, that's planned. Uh -huh. You know, every, everything, they plan everything. It's like there's hours and hours of preparation that, that go into playing their parts. But I, I never prepare. I learn my lines and show up <laughs> and do it. You and I last had a chance to talk back in September uh -huh. um, when, when the show was just about to debut. And, and, and back then, everybody was saying, oh, this is going to be the big mega uh -huh. blockbuster of all uh -huh. time. The show, the show did well. Uh -huh. Finished 38th, but it wasn't the, the mega hit that yeah. other people expected. Did they expect too much? Were the expectations unrealistic? Um, well, again, I, I was blind going in, so I just, I knew that, you know, that everyone was hyping it up and he's gonna be the next this and next that. I was like, oh, please, just let me get one episode behind me. Let me, just let me do one first. So it's like, I, I pretty much had to get away from that, not pay attention to what was going on too much. Um, for me, the whole year was a learning process. Yeah. So uh, as I learned and everything, so now I can have something to do with what the hype is going to be next year. Nice. So you know, it's, I, I was blind. It was like, hey, they, this is their job. I got mine. Let's show a clip of that learning process. This Absolutely. is from tonight's episode when you're um, asking Jeff to go on out with your sister. Okay. There? Okay, Jazz. Um, <laughs> look, you know I'd do anything for you. You're like a brother to me. Check. Which means that your sister should be like a sister to me, not a girlfriend. I mean, just think, if it doesn't work out, it could jeopardize our friendship. I'm willing to take that risk. <laughs> yeah, my brother, I'm gonna have to get us some serious, serious thought. All right, well, can I bring her by just to meet you sometime? Yeah, that's chill. Cool. Tonight, 8 o'clock sharp, and try and smell good. <laughs> Yo, big boy, give your sweet mama some sugar. <laughs> All right, let's talk music. Now, you're putting the video between the two between segments. The two Aren't shows. they really different audiences? I mean, the, the audience for your music and the audience for your TV show? Uh, I don't think so. I think that, that my music audience is a big chunk of the television audience. I think there's a, there's a few new viewers that, that haven't heard Parents Just Don't Understand or Mike yeah. Tyson or Nightmare or any of my other records. 
Um, <clears throat> I think that the character is pretty much the same. It's all me. What I'm giving on the television show is just myself, and what I give in the music is just myself. For those who may not know, before you, you were on television, you, you were a recording artist, yes. along with DJ Jazzy Jeff. But, but the TV show has made it difficult for you to keep up with your music, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, very, very much so. Um, it took us a year to do our album, and our album is finally finished, but it took us a year to do it, because we were, we were trying to do, I'm in Los Angeles, and Jeff is in Philadelphia, so he has sort of a fax thing going with this album, you know, going back and forth and back and forth. But it worked out, turned out good. The album's real good. <laughs> you figure you're gonna have to choose between music and acting? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, what, what I can do now is we, we have a pretty long hiatus in, in, from the acting world, so during the summer I can work on my albums. Nice. The summertime. <laughs> we'll take care of yourself, will you? <laughs> you too. Always fun to take a trip down memory lane. Don't forget the reboot, Bel Air premieres Super Bowl Sunday. You know it's good when it premieres there. February 13th on Peacock. Check out this next conversation right here on Popstar Plus. Okay, I love this quoted by series, but not as much as I love this guy, Pat Monahan. Pat is the, as you guys know, he's the lead singer of Train. He's one of my favorite guys. And Pat, I mean, your music's so soulful, it always hits me at a spot where I just go like, ouch, I can't, I just, it's special. So I wondered, is there a quote that you have that you feel like is kind of a little bit of a guiding light for you? There is. It's it's one that I didn't give you guys. I'm going to tell you the one that I that I gave you. But uh, I've been looking for the one that really did influence me. I, I used to have to go to my uncle's uh, CPA firm, and he had in like old English this uh, saying that said, good things cometh to those who wait as long as those who waiteth worketh their ass off. <laughs> and I couldn't find it. Uh, so the closest one that I could find was this by Thomas Edison, which is opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. And that made a lot of sense to me because, uh, you know, especially young people are they're like, oh, I want to be famous. I want to I want to be a TikTok star, which is awesome because it's such a cool opportunity. But it takes a lot to, to do those things. And that's uh, that's why I love this quote. So do you think that you're where you are today because of hard work or because of talent? Which wins if you're weighing the two? Well, I had to have a little bit of talent, but it was the hard work that really did it. Because I realized early on that I wasn't as talented as Kurt Cobain and so many other very talented people. And it didn't probably come easy to them either, but it sure seemed like it did. So I just had to outwork everybody. And honestly, I still feel like I have to. So oh even being in the music industry for 30 years, I hope to have 30 more, but it won't come for free, you know? Wow. Well, I think that's good for a lot of folks who are watching and wondering, like, I wonder if but I can outwork hardest. Them. You're the hardest working human <laughs> being, in, you know, in the world. All right. Hey, Pat, thank you, honey. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thanks, Soda. And that does it for this edition of Popstar Plus. Be sure and join us again tomorrow. We're going to be catching up with snowboarding star Chloe Kim as the Winter Olympics gets underway. We'll see you then. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever all played? Right. The unicorn. The unicorn. you got to have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah. things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge okay. us in a cook-off? I yes. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day.
Hi there, I'm Jill Martin. As a lifestyle contributor for The Today Show, I've been bringing you small investments that make a big difference in your life. Here on Shop Today, we bring you the biggest names, the hottest products, and the ultimate tips on how to use them. And we have new technology that helps you get these items home with just one click. It's an epic and fun shopping experience you can't find anywhere else. This is Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. As we kick off the month of February, it's all about love. I'm sharing my it list of items I love that are perfect for a special someone in your life, and trust me, they're so good, you might just want one for yourself, too. And if you're looking for an instant refresh for your beauty routine, look no further, because I've got the perfect seasonal staples you're sure to fall head over heels for. Plus, joining us later is award-winning actor and producer Kate Beckinsale with beauty secrets she loves and her exciting new skincare line. So be prepared to shop and get smitten. Shopping with us is easy. Do you see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? It will be there throughout the show, giving you instant access to my product picks. All you need to do is this. Open the camera app on your smartphone or tablet, point the camera to the screen and hold your phone there until your device recognizes the QR code and shows you a notification. Just tap the notification to open the link and start shopping. You can also text SHOP to 34318. Plus, we've created a special destination on today.com where you can shop all the items you see on today's show. Simply visit today.com slash shop all day to get a head start on your shopping and take advantage of some of Shop Today's exclusive deals. It's the month to celebrate all kinds of love for a partner, a friend, your mother, even your coworker. And don't forget the most important person, yourself. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, so many of us are looking for the perfect way to express our love and gratitude. So I found eight of the best items to inspire you to spread love. First up, a comfy addition to your closet, loungewear and bralettes from Skims. I live in these. These cozy sets are getting so much buzz on social media, and it's not hard to see why. Noted for its co-founder, Kim Kardashian, Skims has been revamping the shapewear industry these past few years. Today we have their various bralette styles, like the Fits Everybody line. These are buttery soft and stretched to fit you. Bralettes are perfect to wear all day long because they are so comfortable. Plus, perfect for the colder winter, the Skims lounge sets are luxurious and cozy. Prices for the loungewear and bralettes start at $32. It's a small investment that's going to make a big difference. These are major. Next up, an absolute must, something you don't know you need until you get it, the Asakuki Essential Oil Diffuser. Well, humidifiers are so important this time of year for those who suffer from dry skin like me or have trouble sleeping like me. Plus, the essential oil diffuser can help create a calming environment and give off a wonderful aroma. It comes in four different colors and goes for less than $30. This is a thoughtful and practical present for someone needing to reset and refresh. Moving on to some self-care. It is so important to tailor your skincare routine to your own needs, and that's why Vanity Planet Skin Reporter is so special. Here's how it works. All you need is a smartphone. Snap a photo of your clean face and upload it onto the Skin Reporter. Within 30 seconds, you'll receive your results and a recommendation of curated products all designed to tackle your key skincare concerns. So I did it, and here are the products recommended for me. The Facial Steamer, the Skin Spatula, and the Sonic Facial Brush. And the best part, the Skin Reporter is free to use and the offered Vanity Planet products start at $59, specialized for you. Okay, next up, the Gratitude, a day and night reflection journal. You know how important these journals are for me. This 90-day journal includes both morning meditations and evening reflections. Using a journal like this every day really encourages you to take a moment of pause in your busy routine. It's so important for your mental health. The journal is less than $15. 
Another thoughtful way to show your appreciation, especially for someone who has everything, a great book. And the Paper White from Kindle is an updated take on a classic gift. All right, here's the deal. The new Kindle is now equipped with a bigger screen, thinner borders, and an adjustable warm light. Plus, the brand says the battery lasts up to 10 weeks. That's weeks. With your Kindle, you can pack all of your favorite books on one device. No more lugging all those heavy hardcovers on your next trip. And bonus, if you're headed somewhere warm, the Kindle Paper White has a glare-free display, even in bright sunlight. The Kindle can hold thousands of titles, which is incredible. Prices start at just under $140, a great investment. Okay, so every good read needs a comfy pillow. So. Let's start with this amazing Pluto pillow. This is the perfect upgrade for your sleep routine. And you've never had a pillow like this before because this one is literally made for you. The pillow is customized based on your body stats, sleep position, and preferences. All you have to do is go to the brand's website, fill out a quick questionnaire. There are over 35 variations of pillows based on your results. But no matter what your style, all are made from a solid foam core and outer plush. The standard Pluto pillow retails for $95, or you could get a king one for $115. Scan the QR code to get started. All right, next up, something to help you or someone you love stay organized. You know I love an organizational product. This is a game changer product for that person that can't seem to find anything in their purse. Meet the Lexion Bag Organizer. Now this organizer will help upgrade any purse in a second. It has 13 pockets, okay? And five different sizes, so you can get one for every different purse in your closet. The bag organizer will keep all of your electronics, makeup, and everything organized, and you simply take it from one bag, you just put it in, and then when you're done, everything's already in there, and you wanna switch bags, you could just put it in another. This is awesome. It's made out of a soft wool blend and comes in a range of colors to match your bag or mix it up and use it as a pop of color. And forget the bag, you can use these organizers in your car or even as a toiletry kit. The bag organizers begin at less than $16. These are great. Okay, while you're on the go, here's a must have for these colder months, the perfect down vest. I love this one from Amazon Essentials because it's packable, lightweight, water resistant, and affordable. Each vest comes with a carrying bag with a drawstring closure, perfect for travel, plus it's machine washable. The vest comes in a wide range of colors and in cool prints like camo and animal. There's a color for everyone in your life, for every personality. This is something that you'll wear throughout the season and into next, and it's great to layer. It retails, get this, for just $28. Well, that wraps up my Things We Love It List. Let's run through the products one more time. We have the bralettes and loungewear from Skims, the Asakuki Essential Oil Diffuser, the Skin Reporter from Vanity Planet, the Gratitude Journal, the Paper White from Kindle, the Custom Pillow from Pluto, the Lexion Bag Organizer, and the Packable Down Vest. To shop these products, scan the QR code below for instant access to all the items you'll see on today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. And just so you know, today may make a commission for purchases made through the QR codes or links on today.com. Coming up, we're bringing you the absolute best in beauty to instantly refresh your skincare routine. And later, mega star Kate Beckinsale joins us with her secrets to that Hollywood glow and insider tips you're sure to love. All that and more coming up only on Shop Today. Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. The United United States, States, which is he superhuman? Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering you <laughs> on. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today, 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 today is where the games begin. 
Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. We're celebrating love all month long on Shop Today. And what better way than by showing yourself and your skin a little TLC. The winter weather can be brutal for your skin, but with these products, you're sure to instantly refresh from drab to fab. First up, okay, if you know me, this should be chained around my neck. I always have it. The Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss Moisturizing Glossomer. Now this is an investment, but I use this, I love it, and it gives me that absolute shine. It's my go-to gloss. It uses a non-sticky, ultra-light formula that leaves your lips smooth and plump. It features a dual-side applicator, and it's you hear it. I mean, it's just so fabulous. It's available in 24 shades. This is my shade. It's 726 icing. A lot of you ask me about this. And it's a luxurious upgrade for your everyday gloss, or you could pick a bolder color for a night out. And new gloss is such a great gift to make someone feel special. You could write the card, sending you a kiss. It retails for $32. Scan the QR code now to see all of the incredible options. Moving on to the ultimate multitasker, the Beauty Color Haze Multi-Use Pigment from Ilia Beauty. The Color Haze is a game changer. It's a creamy multi-use pigment for blush and lip all in one. Add a natural finish for an everyday flush or build the product for a bolder statement. This multitasker is great to pop into your purse for those moments you need just a little extra wow, a little pop. The Color Haze comes in five different shades with both warm, neutral, and cool undertones. It retails for $32, and a little goes a long way. Next up, the ultimate self-care must-have. Meet the Essarora Ice Roller. I literally use this every single night and morning because it's perfect when you wake up with puffy eyes or just need a mini spa moment. All you have to do is put the roller head into the freezer and then gently roll on a clean face. It feels so great when you do this. It's really so relaxing. It's part of my routine. The ice roller sells for just under $18, comes in blue, green, purple, or red, whatever the color. Trust me on this one, this is a must have. Okay, next we have two amazing products from Josie Marin. If you haven't heard of this brand, they specialize in beauty with 100% argan oil in every formula. First, we have the Intensive Daily Repair Body Butter from their new Argan Apothecary line. They just launched this year. The body butter is soothing to whip moisturizer that contains great ingredients like shea butter, aloe leaf juice, and argan oil. The packaging is also gorgeous. It comes in a pretty blue jar, so it would make a great gift and it's fully recyclable. This goes for $46 and it's a pretty big jar, so it will go a long way. Now, another special item from Josie Marin targets an area we can all use help with, that sensitive under eye area. Meet the Argan Pro Retinol Eye Cream. The brand says this ultra rich formula works to firm and smooth your skin to help with deep puffing and dark circles. It's made with pink algae, a natural source of vitamin A to help plump up the skin, green coffee extract for that extra boost, and of course their signature 100% pure argan oil. Plus, it's gentle enough to be worn day or night. The eye cream retails for $42. Next up, the new Skin Renewing Nightly Exfoliating Treatment from CeraVe. Perfect if your skin is feeling just dull. The brand says this exfoliating treatment will help brighten. It's made with a blend of glycolic and lactic acids to help promote your skin's natural exfoliation. The brand says it's designed to smooth fine lines and reduce the appearance of wrinkles and dark spots. This product is a great way to renew and restore that natural radiance, plus super affordable. The exfoliating treatment retails for just under $25. 
And lastly, round out your nightly skincare routine with Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. It has a cult following. We're all obsessed with it here. Simply apply generously before bed and wake up with soft, moisturized lips or use it throughout the day to keep your lips extra hydrated. The lip mask comes in berry, vanilla, which is what I use, sweet candy, and gummy bear. This makes a great gift. It's an unusual gift, but a great one because it's a special treat to use every night. It retails for $22 and it comes with the applicator. Now that wraps up our instant refresh. Let's go through the products one more time. We have the Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss Moisturizing Glossomer, the Ilia Beauty Color Haze Multi-Use Pigment, the S Aurora Ice Roller, the skincare products from Josie Marin, the CeraVe Skin Renewing Nightly Exfoliating Treatment, and the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. To shop these products, scan the QR code below for instant access to see all the items you'll see on today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or the old-fashioned way, head to today.com slash shop all day. Next up, don't go anywhere because I'm sitting down with superstar actress and producer Kate Beckinsale to talk all things we love, including her skincare line. And later, we found the best buzzworthy items you're sure to fall for this season. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! Excitement is in the air. Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar, <laughs> Kayla. We are cheering you on. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today, today, today. Today, today is where the games begin. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Shop Today. We're celebrating love all month long, but while we're gifting to all those special people in our lives, we can't forget self-care too. That's why I sat down with actress, model, and producer, the amazing Kate Beckinsale, to chat about all things love and wellness, plus all the details about her new skincare line, Marvel Skin Solutions. Take a look. Hi, Kate, it's so nice to meet you. So nice to meet you too. First of all, it was on the other night, still one of my all-time favorite movies. I can't believe it's been 20 years since Serendipity. Yes, it has. It has been 20 years. They sent me some commemorative ice cream. <laughs> Did they? Yeah, yeah. It's a nice thing to have been in a film that's associated with a very cute restaurant that has great ice cream. Isn't it surprising to you when I say 20 years ago? It's funny because I, I didn't kind of come and do American movies until I had a little baby. So that kind of tracks. She's She was, you know, I don't know, 16 months when I did Serendipity. Has she seen that movie? No. <laughs> 
No interest. Uh, well, this episode, we're picking all the things that we love. It's the month of love and Valentine's Day is coming up. Is that a holiday you like historically or? I didn't like it when I was growing up at all. I, mean, I, was a, I went to a girls school, so it was quite unusual for anyone to really get any attention on Valentine's Day. And now? It sort of depends on the, my circumstances. I tend to involve my daughter and my mom. I like making a fuss on holidays. My Christmas tree is still up, you know. That's interesting because I believe in keeping the holidays in your home as long as you can. It's happy. Last year it stayed up till March. I'm not going to have it stay up till March this year. That's silly. But, you know, within the next week or so, it'll probably come down. You've accomplished so much as an actor, as a producer, and now you're in skincare. So why was it so important to you to bring this into your world? It's lovely to have a beauty line, but like the most important thing was it actually works. I really like how it feels. It's an interesting new thing that no other skincare um, line has. I think we need to dive into the scorpion venom a little bit because it's not often you get to first say it in a sentence, but then associate it with beauty products. So talk to us about scorpion venom. When they said, you know, we're using scorpion venom, my first, they obviously I'm a big animal lover and, and was like, you're not crushing scorpions up, are you? And they were like, no, absolutely not. Um, so I guess they have this kind of extremely nice living area and this island for all these scorpions and then sort of gently they're milked by hand, which sounds crazy, but has all these incredible, you know, rejuvenating properties and doesn't harm the scorpions. The Arnica Recovery Cream, which I actually used the other night. Um, tell me why you love this. It is so moisturizing. It's super moisturizing and kind of fluffy. It's incredibly soothing, brings down redness and any kind of anything that feels slightly inflamed on your skin. I should say, a lot of your products are investment products, but a little goes a long way. I've been using the same bottles of all of mine since June, and I still have quite a bit left. So you don't have to use tons and tons of it. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> your Instagram star. Yes, yeah, that one's the, probably the most inquisitive. I've been following you on Instagram. It's like a zoo there. I mean, you have a lot going on. So tell me about each of them because they all make appearances on your social media. I do. I have a, I have a dog and two cats. So the oldest cat is, uh, he's 17, so I've had him a long time. Um, and his name is Clive. And he's the one that likes to wear outfits, like actively likes it. The other ones will wear them, but he enjoys it. I believe in finding a beauty routine. You're a big bath person, I was told. I really don't like to go from day to night without submerging my entire body in water. I would feel not right. I love a bath. I usually have it as hot as I possibly can get it and sweat it out for a bit. Aside from your line, what's one beauty secret of yours? Um, I had a doctor who told me that she had a patient who was in her 90s and had the most incredible skin and that this woman was constantly uh, uh, putting buttermilk, quite a lot of it, in her bath. So I was like, okay, buttermilk is extremely reasonably priced. I quite frequently will dump two or, two or three quarts of buttermilk in the bathtub and uh, I think it is, it, it's pretty great. And inexpensive, how often do you do that? Once or twice a week, depending how fancy I'm feeling, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I continue to watch you um, amuse us through oh, your uh, social media. So thank oh, you for much. that. Thank you so much. It's lovely meeting you. Isn't she incredible and funny? Thanks, Kate, for such a great conversation. To shop these products and find more from Kate Beckinsale's skincare line, scan the QR code below for instant access. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. Well, just ahead, we have all the buzziest buys you are sure to fall in love with. That's coming up only on Shop Today. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Sunday Sit-Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya! Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Shop Today. Today we're celebrating all things love and whether you're shopping for a friend, partner, or even yourself, these buzzworthy gifts are so nice, you just might wanna buy them twice. Okay, first off, I've never seen anything like this. The Nuni Marshmallow Whip Maker. Stay with me here. This product transforms any of your cleansers into a rich marshmallow-like foam. All you need is a pearl size amount of product and a little bit of water to make a full container of foam. And what I like best about this, not only does it feel luxurious, it makes your products last longer. Plus, it's easy to wash, so you could use it over and over again. The Nuni Marshmallow Whip Maker retails for just $7. This is worth the try. Now that we've upgraded our cleanser, moving on to serums. Meet Herbivore's Cloud Jelly Plumping Hydration Serum. In these dry winter months, a hydration serum is a must. This one is made with a non-sticky hyaluronic acid alternative that's perfect for dull, dehydrated skin. Plus, listen to this, it's made with mushrooms. Tremella mushroom is a key ingredient in this cult favorite, and the brand claims it can hold up to 500 times its weight in water. It goes for $48. Next up, if you tried the gua sha trends, a lot of you have, I know, you need this. The combing therapy set, comb and scalp essence from Momi. This set comes with a brass gua sha comb and scalp essence. So you apply the essence to damp, clean hair and then gently comb the curves of your head with the gua sha to help relieve tension and stimulate circulation. And who doesn't love a head massage? This is an amazing gift, feels like you're in a spa and it's a great gift for yourself. It retails for $84. And lastly, complete your own self-care moment or gift to someone you love with the Patchology Serve Chilled Bubbly Eye Gels. Now, I tried a lot of these out, and this is why I love these. They're simple to use. You simply place the eye gels on your under eye for 10 minutes or longer. I leave it on for 10, and it will leave you feeling relaxed and refreshed. What I love best, you could pop them into the fridge for an extra cooling effect. These refreshing eye gels come in a 15-pair jar of one-time-use eye gels. The 15-pair jar retails for $35. So that's it for my buzzworthy picks. Let's recap the products one more time. We have the Nuni Marshmallow Whip Maker, the Herbivore Cloud Jelly Plumping Hydration Serum, the Combing Therapy Set, Comb and Scalp Essence from Momi, and the Patchology Bubbly Eye Gel. To shop these products, scan the QR code below for instant access to all the items from today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or Head to today.com slash shop all day. And that wraps up this episode of Shop Today. It went so fast. I love shopping and celebrating love with all of you. I want to send an extra special thank you to the incredibly glamorous and gracious Kate Beckinsale for sharing her timeless beauty tips and favorite products from her new line. I hope you found just the thing you need for a special gift of love this season. And I hope you'll tune in next month for a special Shop Today show highlighting some of the most incredible female founders and business owners in honor of Women's History Month. You won't want to miss the stories and the exclusive deals. 
Until then, wishing you lots of love and gratitude. See you next time. This morning, best-selling cookbook author and chef, our friend Padma Lakshmi. That's right. Her latest cookbook is out right now, and it's called Tomatoes for Neela. And this morning, she's got some great ideas to share for healthy winter dishes. Padma, <clears throat> first of all, it's great to see you. And the ingredient we're starting with that we're focusing on is kale. It's like one of those superfoods. Yes, that's right. It is kale. I love kale. I try to throw it in every dish I have because it's a great hearty but healthy winter uh, green. You know, what I love about kale is that it's great raw, it's great wilted with dressing the next day. It's also wonderful cooked. It has a ton of vitamins, Hoda. It has vitamin A, it has vitamin C, folate, it has vitamin B, vitamin K, it has a ton of antioxidants. It also has omega-3 uh, fatty um, acids, calcium, potassium, you name it. Ooh, hey, Ways you can use this hearty, hearty winter green. So I have two kinds of kale here. This is curly kale, mm -hmm. which you guys probably are familiar with. There's lots of uh, different types of kale. And then I have this, which is called dragon kale. Dragon kale. Kale. Uh, in Italian, it's called lacinato kale. Mm -hmm. And this is the kale that I like the best. You just want to take the center stem and strip that off and then just chop it. What I like to do is buy the kale whole, take, wash it, dry it on kitchen towels, take that center stem off and chop it up, and then put it in a bag and leave it in my crisper so it's always ready oh. for me to throw into um, all my soups and salads. You know, sometimes those lettuces are great. Mm -hmm. You don't finish your salad, you have to throw out the salad. Whereas if you have a salad made with kale, mm. instead of those lettuces, which are mostly water and are still great, but don't have the same nutrients, you can have that salad for two or three days. Hey, Padma, some people, I hear some people massage the kale. Mm -hmm. do you, did you do that? Uh, I don't massage the kale. I just chop it fine. <laughs> you ain't fancy. All right, so, so what, what are we making? What I'm doing, we're going to bounce around with some recipes just because I'm cooking here. So I have sauteed some just plain yellow onion mm -hmm. with a little cumin seeds and some oil and two red chilies. You see that? Uh -huh. Those are sauteing and to that, I'm going to add some minced ginger mm. and some minced garlic. And that is going into some lentils, also called dal, which we'll make in a minute. But I just want to get that going um, so it browns and cooks nicely. To that, I'm adding a little bit of ground turmeric. You see that? I feel like I'm doing one of those beauty Instagram <laughs> And so I'm going to saute this and let that go. And while that's going, I'm going to show you this salad. Look at this beautiful Yum. salad. Ooh. The mozzarella. Chickpeas. Chickpeas. On the show, uh, for you guys a while back on another holiday season. It's just simple. Pomegranate, pearl mozzarella, the mm. mint, some serrano. Mm. It's dressed so basically with just <laughs> olive oil, balsamic, and lime juice. I'm going to take that salad and I'm going to add a bunch of chopped kale to it. And this salad then becomes more hearty yeah. and it lasts much longer than any other salad would. And it's filling, frankly, this would make a great lunch to take to the office or to school the next day. Um, my daughter, Krishna, takes this salad when she's got a field trip and she's the envy of all her mm. teachers. That What's the dressing that. on that? Yeah, and the dressing will wilt the, um, kale so that it'll be beautiful the next day. All the juices mm -hmm. from the mozzarella and the pomegranate season that kale with the dressing. And look how beautiful that is. Mm. It's don't, you also love the, don't you love the kale because it, it even wilted or even chopped up like that, it holds up against yeah. the dressings and sauces. It, it stays robust and doesn't wilt away. Exactly. Now you can see how these onions and ginger and garlic are frying and breaking down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got about 10 or 15 seconds. I would add pancetta to that, yeah. but that's me. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some tomato to that. Uh -huh. And here I have some yellow lentils. Oh, that yum. I love, love those. Salt. I'm adding kale to that. Uh -huh. hey, like, I want that. this. I want this for me breakfast. Too. A stew, which is yum. basically... But you could do chicken or beef, and I'm adding kale to that. Love it. There you go. 
Thank you, Padma. Padma, Padma. We got to run. Yummy. We got to run. But all of these dishes are going to be on our website. Looks real good. Today.com slash food. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of a COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal, Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight, where two chefs go head-to-head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up yeah. uh, early. What are yeah, we, what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very very comforting, and it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's going to be rigatoni. It's going to be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rabe, and some tomato mm-hmm. sauce. A little vodka sauce in there as well. So I'm going to start off by cooking some rigatoni. Uh, and some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million times in the Today Show. Lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit. Some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're going to add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most classic Italian-American pasta dishes is pasta alla, alla vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pink sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do to it? Question. What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> so, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the, with the hot Italian sausage. And then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce. I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Okay. So we're just going to, we're going to cover the, uh, the pasta in the sauce. And I'm going to add some fontina cheese to it. Yum. And this is all going to go into a casserole dish. And I mm. love cooking things, you know, I call it oven to table, where, you, where you, you, know, you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven-proof dish like mm-hmm. this one. So, Bobby, you did, put- did you cook that pasta al dente because it's going to be cooking longer in the oven? Yes. That's actually, I that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked. So maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce. It's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees. And on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. And then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, Bobby, oven, how gonna, do you keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there. It's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like, you know, like when you have the lasagna, 
and the and the, and the edges and the crispiness mm -hmm. around the stuff. What mm -hmm. do you always want to have part of it? You get you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for. I don't know, about 15 to 20 minutes, because don't forget, the pasta's already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up. And then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to Whoa. broil. Mm. Pour yourself a Cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your uh, take out your, your pasta, and you can see, this is what it's gonna look like. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I hope that's what and I'm that talking about. Over here. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make Fresh this. Herbs. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Make, Man, make it about this yeah. weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take a, take a little bit and just try to kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that. Nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Look at that. That's I it. mean, after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, Jeez. which is insane. <laughs> But I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, does, I don't know, does six, your, seven years. Does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> You guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. Oh, oh. Actually, Carson, you know what? You, you've actually done your research because Christi Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So if you get the sausage out of here, she's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture over there. As well. <laughs> well, he last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah, like, then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, yeah. she's yeah. a lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely yeah. lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because, you know, I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened the Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well. And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm -hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. We'll All right. To Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Listen to the thing about Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to the thing about Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. We're back with Today Food, and this morning we're going to put a healthier twist on a classic comfort dish. That's right, the one and only Gianna De Laurentiis joining us this morning, ahead of the premiere of her new Food Network show, Simply 
Giada. She's going to cook up some of her favorite light and flavorful, flavorful recipes on the show. She's going to do it for us this morning as well. Always good to see you, Giada. Good morning. Hey, get Hi, out. guys. Good morning. <laughs> Let's Really quickly, though, how are you and Jade doing? We noticed on Instagram that, that you two were social distancing. All, <laughs> all is okay now? We were also, yes, yes, all is okay now. Jade had COVID, and I was trying to avoid COVID. Listen, but, you know, like, yeah. Good plan. A lot of people can relate to that. I feel like I should have just let it go. Yeah, like, yes, yeah. We're all set. We're all better now. Good. Well, we're glad we're doing well. We know, listen, nothing can stop you from, from cooking. Uh, and with so many of us at home, Never. we need your help. What are your thoughts on, let's do tonight's dinner. What's on the menu? So chicken mayonnaise is um, uh, for dinner tonight. So I think most people know what chicken mayonnaise is. But basically, chicken cutlets, pound it thin. Or you can buy chicken cutlets at the store, and I'm lightening them up. The whole idea of Simply Jada that airs this Sunday is that I'm basically all the recipes are inspired by my cookbook that came out mm, about a year ago. I eat better, feel better. So it's about eating better and not skimping on flavor. So we're taking the chicken, we seasoned it with salt and pepper. We're putting it in um, brown rice flour, which makes this dish gluten-free mm. and really lightens it up quite a bit. Mm. So you dredge in a little bit of brown rice flour then a little bit of beaten egg and you season all of the ingredients, the mm -hmm. flour, the egg, with a little bit of salt and panko breadcrumbs, but we're gonna use gluten-free breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. They give it a nice crispy sort of crust on the chicken, but they also make it gluten-free for everybody. So it's a little easier on your tummy. You so know? you're kind of double so dredging it's a great way it. To eat. I'm dredging it, yes. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of the breadcrumb mixture. And then what we do is we come over here to the pan and I've already got one now sort of cooking away. I put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. And you can use avocado oil, safflower oil. Um, the olive oil just gives it a nice golden crust, as you can see. And we just cook this in here for a couple of minutes. Yum. We get this nice golden crust. And then I love to serve it with a little bit of arugula on top and um, just some fresh lemon right over it. And that's basically dinner. And it Yum. makes it really satisfying without skipping on flavor, but really good and clean. And I have to tell you, it's pretty simple. You know, sometimes we get these recipes where, you know, I want to do it, but there's a lot involved. This is something that everybody can do. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, you could even make it earlier in the day and pop it in the oven at about 250, 200, warm up the chicken. You can make a sandwich out of it, or you could just reheat it and eat it for dinner. I was so going to say, for leftover, with leftovers, Jada, that thing looks like it would be a fantastic mm -hmm. on, a, on a hoagie or something like that with a little tomato sauce. <laughs> Yes, but I will be for sure. That'll, that'll kind of that lighten, that, that, that yeah. lighten it up. Wouldn't that lighten it up? That actually lighten it up, Al, but okay. Runs counter oh, to what yeah, she's trying yeah. to do here. Oh, right. Uh -huh. Jenna, really quick, how long on each side did you cook that? Um, I cooked it about four minutes on each side, but it kind of depends on how thin your cutlet is. Mm. I found in my chicken breast because I couldn't find any cutlets yesterday. But um, if they're really, really thin, it only takes like two, three minutes on each side. So it's very, very, very fast dinner that is really quite scrumptious. Because who doesn't like fried chicken? That's pretty much what it is, yeah. but a lightened up version. Hey, Jada, Jada, what would you serve with that the, mm. uh, out of the cookbook uh, that's a little lighter that you normally wouldn't uh, have lighter? You mean um, alongside it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like you could do a quinoa or a brown rice um, on the side of it. You could use, you know, like a tomato sauce. You could add tomato sauce to the brown rice or to the quinoa to add more flavor. Oh, that's good. Um, mm. So it would almost be like a chicken farm, but not really, but right. sort of on the same flavor profile. Um, so I like to do that with gluten-free pasta. Jane really likes it with gluten-free pasta. Yeah. I mean, she really likes it with regular pasta, but yeah. when we're kind of lighting things up, we use gluten-free. Gianna, thank you. Thank you so much, as always. Happy New Year. Great to see you guys. Happy New Year, in the studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, which that chicken we're here in the studio as well. <laughs> you can find the recipe on today.com slash food, by the way, and be sure to check out Giada's new show on Food Network, All Simply right. Giada. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You know the saying, chicken soup is good for the soul, especially in the cold months. And someone who loves chicken soup so much he makes it for his family all the time is celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen. Right now he's in his kitchen. He's at home in Florida. Hey, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm sorry I'm in Florida. It's 50 here, but I, I know it's really cold there. You know, that's know. Just we didn't cruel. know you lived in Florida, and now we're kind of angry at your jealous. tan. Look at your tan. No, I, I'm tan all the time. You know that. Anyway, <laughs> everybody loves a good chicken soup, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a mashup, right? I'm doing a chicken noodle ramen mashup, mm. and the reason why I like it is you talk about healthy eating, New Year, really delicious, but also yummy. I mean, food has to be yummy. I don't know about you guys, but yes. if it's not yummy, I don't want it. But look at this, look at all these gorgeous vegetables. Mm. That's right in the market. Beautiful. There's nothing fancy here. Carrots, parsnips, some onions, some leeks, some great herbs and ginger. And it's very simple. So let's start with our vegetables, okay? So we're gonna make sure our vegetables are cut evenly. Why? Because they cook evenly, really important. Oh, but a all soup the same size, is, that makes sense. All yes. the same size. A soup is so easy, just follow these techniques and you're gonna be very, very happy. And, and the addition to making this soup is you get leftover stock that you can freeze. Okay, we're gonna take our celery, our carrots, we're gonna just cut them on the bias like this, very simply, and it's very easy once they're lined up together to make sure they're, they're the, same the same size, really yeah. easy. So we've taken our leek and um, what you make sure you cut it open and you wash it because there is dirt in there mm -hmm. and just follow the same yeah. methodology. Just a nice, probably this is quarter inch, I'm just guessing quarter inch, but everything's gonna be ready at the same time. So it shouldn't take that long to cook a proper soup. The stock takes the most time. It's like cooking the chicken takes about like an hour. Now parsnips, I love parsnips guys because they have a sweetness that is just uh -huh. yeah, remarkable. Crispy. So, hey, hey, Jeffrey, crispy and Jeffrey, yummy. Why, why leeks instead of like another kind of onion? Here's a tip, leeks have less sulfur than onion so your stock stays lighter, it doesn't darken. You know, sometimes it oh, yeah. turns really brown and I use leeks, it's a little secret of a chef. Okay. All right. So are you ready for the big ready? deal? Yes, let's, let's cook, cook the chicken. a chicken. Yes, sir. Very easy. We have our veggies. We're going to go over by, by the, my beautiful wife is holding the camera. She's the camera person today. So mm -hmm. we it's have good. a pot, a very big pot, and we're going to put it on high. And we're using a four pound chicken just like this. Use a tong so you don't have to touch the chicken and just put that right in there. All right. And then another secret, guys, chicken wings. Oh, tons of gelatin and tons of meat. There's tons of meat on chicken wings. We're going to put those wait, in. Oh, wait, and then, okay, sorry. You we, had us until we, you said we, the word gelatin. For a second. What is that? Gelatin. Mean? Gelatin. Gelatin is that stuff that umami you taste when you smell soup that your uh, mom's oh. cooking or your grandmother cooked. And the schmaltz is the chicken fat. So all that together okay. is loaded in those chicken wings and then chicken word. stock now you just cover this notice no water no salt no pepper nothing at all just chicken mm. stock you could use water but i like to get it up just a bit just jab it a bit and i put a touch of white wine vinegar or Ooh. wine you don't have mm -hmm. to just a little acid now we're gonna let that chicken go for about an hour once it comes out we're gonna put it on a rack let it cool and then we're gonna take all the delicious yes, chicken off peel it off so, you take the bones out or you yeah I right. take the bones out, everything, okay. and then we have our beautiful stock. And remember those veggies we cut perfectly? Yes. I know you know how to do that now. Yeah. All right. We're just going to slide that slide in there. Right. And magic, a couple of peas. You take frozen peas. Oh. I think this is going to probably take 10 minutes. You have all the flavor there. The miso is really special. The miso is soybean paste. It gives a little saltiness. It's really, really delicious. Where's so the ramen? We, 
The Raman. Ah, where's the Raman? It's coming. All right. So remember, we have our soup. Our beautiful veg our vegetables are in there. Mm -hmm. And like, can you get in there, Margaret, and take a look at that? How Margaret, gorgeous that looks. Good shot, Margaret. Oh. Yeah, good shot. Are no. you ready? Okay, yeah, we need the ready. ramen though, because we came for the ramen. Yes. You came for the ramen. So we're gonna take a big bowl. I like to serve this in giant bowls. I have our pre-cooked ramen. This is beautiful. Oh. Whole wheat ramen. I just oh, you put can that in buy the bottom. Whole, where do you buy whole wheat ramen? Anywhere? Ah, uh, there's tons of it. Tons of it. Oh. You can use regular, but I like the whole wheat, right? Yeah, I'm better I'm gonna, for you. Now we're gonna have yeah. some fun. Now we're doing the mashup part, right? Oh. We're gonna pour this glorious, mm. healthy, Ooh, gorgeous soup ramen. on top. That yum. Oh, ramen. That. Takes me back to my college days. Yes. Yep. Right, and then some Sprinkle chicken. Now I choose to put the mm. chicken on. Oh, the chicken Just like this. I don't put the chicken in the stock because I don't want it to get overcooked. And a lot of people store their chicken Neither in the stock. Yeah. And, yeah. and what happens, it gets overcooked. And now, the secret. Now we have fun. Now we have our scallions. It's uh -huh. going to be like we're making a fuss. it up. Yes. We're going to put some, some beautiful pea shoots, some scallions, some bamboo shoots. Have fun here. I'm using whatever I found at the, uh, at the farmer's market uh -huh. uh, or at the grocery market. Some radishes. radishes. Ooh. Oh, Ginger. Jeffrey, Jeffrey got this. Thank you. We Ginger, got a roll, Jeffrey. It looks so yummy. It really does. You did great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bon appetit. Thank you, Thank Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Tell your daughters hey. All right. All right, guys. For this recipe, Bye. head to today.com slash food. Okay, we are 10 days into the new year, and if you're already finding it hard to eat healthier or you haven't even started yet, guess what? Here's your Monday motivation. It is never too late. Always okay, start on Monday. We can always count on Today Nutritionist and our pal, Joy Bauer, to whip up something healthy and delicious. Joy, a lot of people, we didn't get a real reset, so we're resetting today. So what do you have for us today? I am so crazy excited to show you how to make this meal. I think it's going to be on repeat in both of your homes, and it's super Kid friendly. Okay. So this is a turkey bolognese. Mm. It's obviously it's healthified. It's packed with protein, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. But I'm telling you the best part, it is a one pot wonder. And I think you're gonna be amazed how easy this thing comes together. Okay, and you've decided so, to swap beef for turkey. Is that because it's a little leaner? Starting. That's what you're supposed to do? That's right. Yeah. So here, what this is a pound of lean ground turkey. And when you shop for it at the store, look for turkey that is between 90 and 94% lean, because it's still gonna be flavorful and juicy. If you get up to the 99% lean, it's too dry. So between 90 mm, and 94%. 94. After this was already cooked, what I've done is I threw in, you can see here all the vegetables. I have diced celery, red bell pepper, onion, and carrots. And I saute it with the meat. Uh. But because I want to save a little bit of time, because I'm going to nail this thing before we close the spot. Okay. <laughs> I pre-sauteed all of the yummy vegetables. And now we basically have a nutrition party in this pot. Okay. We now take... This is a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Oh, wow. One yeah. cup of broth, whatever you have in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna take another easy way out. And instead of dealing with separate seasonings, I have here just five teaspoons of Italian seasoning. So this adds mm, oregano mm -hmm. and basil and thyme, yeah. And then stir this whole thing up. I'm gonna put it on the stove, let it cook for about 25 minutes covered can you ask, uncover it can i ask one question joy shake. just to be clear yeah. so the turkey was already cooked and you add, if you were just starting from scratch you'd put in the raw turkey and all the veggies at together the at the same time as in saute no, I'm, I'm so glad you asked that no so first what i do is i in stages i cook the ground turkey first By and itself. it takes about six minutes right and i'm just sort of chopping it up when the ground turkey is cooked and there's no more pink, then I throw in the veggies. Oh. We're building, and it's another six to eight minutes. Okay. And then you you throw Ooh, in everything else, that. and look at this. That looks like a sloppy and joe. So, <laughs> mm. so, you know, okay. it's interesting that you say that, Hoda, because I actually like to put it on toasted English muffins Ooh. or in soft, like, Portuguese buns. Oh, my goodness. So now I'm going to take this pasta. Now, yes, what is you this can pasta? Eat whole yeah. This is a whole grain pasta. Yeah. And for people that are sensitive to cutting back on carbs, you can use zoodles, which are zucchini noodles, 
or you can also do spaghetti squash. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, I have over here some parm because you guys know everything's better with a little oh, bit yes. of parm. Oh, oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. By Is the way, this amazing? I've seen some chickpea, like some other kind of flour pasta. Are those better for you? That's what this is, actually. Oh. So I said it was a whole grain, but if you opened up my cabinet, I have true whole grain, which is just 100% whole wheat. But I also have so many different brands of, like, chickpea or bean or lentil pasta. Is that better? I would suggest people experiment around. It has a little bit more protein, and it has a little bit more fiber. It really depends mm. on what you prefer in terms of your taste. One other thing I'm going to do as soon as we... Um, shut down the segment yeah. i'm gonna try to make a bolognese burrito i'll yes. let you know how it works out i'm and gonna put it in a wrap yes, with a yes. lot of cheese we love on a it bolognese then... burrito yes. joy yes. joy yes. we miss you we miss you um, it's good to see you though to get this recipe head to today.com slash food <laughs>the time I was living in Paris I was just a couple months out of college and I was working as a paralegal and pursuing this other you know stringer position on the side and I hadn't been feeling well for a while it started with an itch and the itch blossomed into all kinds of mysterious symptoms mm -hmm. I was getting colds all the time and coming down with bouts of bronchitis uh, but the biggest symptom I had was fatigue mm. But of course, at 22, everyone is tired. Yeah. Everyone that I was hanging out with was working hard and going out at night dancing. And so I didn't really make much of it. And I went to see a number of doctors, all of whom, you know, treated that specific symptom or ailment right. and sent me home. And toward the end of my time in Paris, I started to get the feeling that my doctors that I was seeing weren't taking me seriously mm -hmm. but I think the truth is I wasn't entirely taking myself seriously mm -hmm. and it was only when I got to a point where I was so weak it was a struggle to walk up and down the stairs that I found myself in an emergency room and within 24 hours I was on a plane back home to wow. upstate New York and I got the bone marrow biopsy that led to my actual diagnosis to hear the words that you were diagnosed with a specific type of leukemia at 22 is scary enough, but when they said the chances of survival were one in three, I mean, my God, yeah. like what does a, what goes through a 22 year old's head? I think there was this immediate sense of fracture. There was my life before yeah. and everything that came after. And, you know, I never returned to Paris, to my apartment, to my job. Friends packed up my things and, and mm. sent them to my house. And I had this sense, even though I couldn't quite wrap my head around what it meant to have a cancer diagnosis at 22, that the person I'd been before was buried. There was mm. no returning mm. to that pre-diagnosis self. The cancer fight, and it, I don't know how y you describe it, but it usually there's a beginning and an end point for it. I mean, I had breast cancer. I think for six or eight months, I went through stuff. Yeah. Your timing, the, the three and a half, was it three and a half, four years of going through chemo and bone marrow and chemo again. How did you see light and how mm -hmm. did you survive all those days? One of the most challenging parts of that experience was the sense of the goalposts moving. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, you know, on day one that I was going to be in treatment for three and a half years. And they say you can survive anything as long as you can see the end date yeah. in sight. And there came a point in my treatment where I couldn't see that end in sight. Mm. And that was the most challenging, I think, to know how to kind of anchor yourself when you're swimming in a sea of uncertainty. I mean, there are life lessons that come in your worst times. I mean, some change we, we choose in our life and some is cast upon us and mm. you have to figure it out. And I don't know, I remember so clearly how the world got clear. Like it, I was never clear. I think I was kind of always mushy about things. Mm. Those are my friends. I don't love that one so much, but so what? They're nice. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And then all of a sudden you realize like 
my life has a beginning and an end and I'm not wasting time. Like that time is over. Yeah. Did you have that sensation? Yeah. I think like, you know, a lot of people in their early 20s, I had this feeling of time. Yes. I had time to figure out who I was, time to figure out what I wanted to do. And that diagnosis brought into immediate, urgent focus the fact that we're all here for a finite Mm -hmm. period of time. And I felt a strange sense of urgency around time. Mm -hmm. And I had the same experience. It felt like all the artifice just kind of fell away. Yeah, I got clear not only about who my friends were, but maybe more importantly, who I wanted to be friends with and what Mm. kind of relationships I wanted to cultivate. And I had such limited energy that I was well enough to maybe do three things every day, small Mm. things like write an email, watch a movie, see a friend. And what that meant for me was that I had to get very clear about my priorities. Wow, that is so true. And it there's something so strange about how free you feel suddenly. You didn't even realize you were carrying all that heavy junk around. Yeah. It's like, I didn't even, you know, you don't even realize it. It's like my shoulders feel lighter, even okay. though you're in the middle of it. So to have a doctor say to you after a bone marrow transplant and chemo again, okay, I don't know if he used the term cancer free or mm-hmm. you are in remission, but to hear those words, what did, what did that moment feel like? Mm. I mean, I had been hoping to hear those words for almost three and a half years. The goal had always been to survive. And I'd spent, you know, 1400 days working tirelessly toward that goal. And I thought when I got to that place, I would want to celebrate. Yeah, I wanted to feel grateful. I wanted to quickly and organically fold back into the rhythms of living. But instead, I found myself in this kind of limbo, this kind of in-between place where on paper I was better, Mm -hmm. but off paper I couldn't have felt further from being the healthy, happy, you know, 27-year-old that I'd hoped to be on the other side of all this. Especially because when you spend almost, well, three and a half years in one space, the it's the same thing, the idea that, okay, now this is over and all your friends or some of your friends and colleagues are saying, oh, great. So now we can go back to the way it was. Let's go out to the bar. Let's go have some fun. Exactly. You weren't feeling those things. Yeah, I wanted to be you feeling wanted those to, yeah. things. But, you know, I think often when we talk about things like cancer, the kind of final act yeah. or the end of the story is comes with a cure. Uh, but we mm-hmm. don't talk a lot about what happens after. Mm-hmm. And... It took me a a while to even acknowledge to myself how much I was struggling. There were so many unanswered questions that I didn't know what to do with. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, how do I find a job when I need to nap for four hours Mm -hmm. in the day or my immune system is still sending me to the emergency room on Mm -hmm. a regular basis? How do I date when I have a quarter inch of hair and a port still in my chest, how do I talk about, you know, the side effects of chemo, like infertility or early menopause? Like all of it felt so overwhelming. And in a weird way, I found myself almost wishing that I was still sick, not because I wanted to have leukemia, of course, but I understood the hospital ecosystem. Right. That was the world right. I lived in for four years. I felt comfortable there. I looked like the other patients. It was the outside world Mm -hmm. that felt scary and foreign and daunting to me. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. 
what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. So I love your New York Times column. I thought it was so beautiful and riveting and moving. But what I loved so much more was when people reached out to you because they wanted, because they, they connected with you. You had mm. this way that whether you were sick before or you weren't, or you knew, somehow people felt you, like they, you reached across and you grabbed them by the heart. Mm. And people wrote you letters. And you know, in, in this industry, sometimes you get a letter and you got beautiful letters and you read them, but then you did something totally amazing. Like I have not, <laughs> I have not heard of someone doing this, but what did you do with those letters that you got? So, you know, in that year after I finished treatment, I was in the most lost place yeah. I've ever been. I knew I wasn't a cancer patient anymore. I knew I couldn't return to the person I'd been pre-diagnosis, but I had no idea who I was. And so I started thinking about these different rites of passages that we have in our culture, these kind of ritualized ceremonies that help us move through transitions mm -hmm. like baby showers and mm -hmm. weddings and funerals. And I realized that there wasn't a kind of ritual or rite of passage when you emerge from a long illness. Mm -hmm. And I needed that. I needed time to reckon with what I'd been through and to reflect on yeah. who I wanted to become. I needed the space away from my home and my kind of cancer identity to really kind of come into my own. And so I hatched this kind of boondoggle <laughs> of a plan and I decided to learn how to drive. You hadn't you didn't have your license. I did not have my license. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I rented out my apartment yep. and I borrowed a friend's car and I ended up embarking on a 15,000 mile road trip across the country to meet some of the strangers who'd written me letters about their own major life interruptions mm. and their own stories of transition. And they really, you know, those individuals, there were about 22 of them that I visited, became my sort of breadcrumb trail through the wilderness of survivorship. Mm. I was always prepared for the other shoe to drop, uh. prepared for something to go wrong. And what I found instead in these encounters and on that road trip was that the world really welcomed me at mm. every turn. I ended up you know, staying on someone's fold out couch. I stayed on a ranch in Wyoming with a family of survivalist ranchers. I visited a high school teacher in California who was grieving the death of her son. I oh. went to uh, a maximum security prison in Texas to visit a death row convict. And each of those conversations helped me gain a sense of perspective mm. on my own predicament. But more than that, I think it showed me a way to reimagine community. And it gave me this sense of connection that at a time in my life when I felt so lost and so isolated, really helped me see a path forward. Are you happy? 
I'm so happy. <laughs> what, what makes you happy now? The strange thing in the last year of this pandemic is I found myself uh, living a, a version of the life that I had when I was sick, which mm. is to say that my circle is much smaller, smaller right. my life is quieter. And I don't know about you, but I have spent so much of the last decade striving and working and hustling, and I feel so privilege to get to do work that I love. Mm -hmm. But I've also been thinking about the way that that working at that pace can be its own kind mm -hmm. of trauma response. Mm -hmm. So this year for me, my goal has been leisure, uh, which isn't to say I'm not working all the of time. You are. Yeah. But, you know, these small moments that I've gotten to have in the last year of, of being at home with our dogs, of gardening, of hanging out with my partner, John. Of you know, it's so interesting because I, I sometimes think like life is full of exclamation points. It's like the good ones. You graduated from college, you meet a great guy, you have a baby, you get married, and then on the flip side, it's you get a sad diagnosis, somebody passes away, etc. But most of the days mm -hmm. are just Wednesday, yeah. in the middle. Nothing terrific and nothing horrible, just Wednesday. Yeah, something I've been thinking about recently is trying to approach my Wednesday as ritual, hmm. washing the dishes as ritual, mm -hmm. gardening as ritual, and really trying to kind of slow down and savor that because it's so easy to move from one exclamation point to the next. But I'm sure as you know, you know, when you get a scary diagnosis, you're not thinking about the things that are on your resume. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about the people you love mm -hmm. and wanting to spend time with them you're thinking about the things that nourish you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all the rest doesn't matter as much and it falls away. You know, we live in a country that has this culture uh, or this anxiety of around accomplishment. Um, and in this season in my life, I'm trying very hard um, to resist that and, and to kind of center myself back and those things that I love, the same things that I loved as a little girl, the dancing and music and, and writing and, and family. Speaking of music, music has always been a big part of your life. Music has always been a big part of my life. Which explains your very handsome and awesome boyfriend. <laughs> if you don't know John Baptiste, and we're going to bring him in here in just a second, but he's a cool cat. Boy, is he something special. He is. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. The United States wins the Is he superhuman? Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering you yeah. on. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today, today, today. Today, today is where the games begin. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? 
The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm sitting smack dab in the middle of a love story. (laughs) Um, Okay, so... You're 13 years old. You're both geeks. I know you are at 13 because nobody was not a geek at 13. Oh, yes. So are you guys close to the same age? Yeah, we're about a year and a half apart. A year and a half apart. Mm-hmm. So, uh, John, do you remember uh, your girl from band camp at age 13? <laughs> so here's what I remember. Uh-huh. I remember Birkenstocks. This is not an You had Birkenstocks on? Before they were cool. Yeah. <laughs> she was ahead. Suleika was ahead. <laughs> now, nah, and I also must say... I am am honored to talk to you because when I was growing up at that time, I was watching you on WWL. Come on, oh. come on. <laughs> so when I was growing up in New Orleans, Kenna, Louisiana, uh-huh. you'd be on TV. My first time leaving was to go to this band camp. First time leaving <laughs> home and being somewhere for the summer. You go somewhere for the summer for the first time, it's like a new world. Yeah, where you, was band camp? Where were you? Saratoga Springs. Oh, so you took a big trip. This yes. was not a nothing. All oh. right. Upstate New York. So you were already, <laughs> what instrument were you playing, John, at the Piano. time? Piano. And I saw her in the courtyard. And this is, you know, again, I thought this was maybe a New York thing. People wear Birkenstocks. <laughs> Nobody was wearing that in New Orleans. <laughs> no, they weren't. Those were not cool in New Orleans. And I thought it, it would, what immediately came to my mind was, oh, she's like a, a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like granola. Like <laughs> that <vibe>. granola. <laughs> Uh, and how did you at 13 were you at what did you have any confidence level at 13 or were you like a lot of 13 year old girls you did she did definitely I was what? a 13 year old definitely. going on 20 I thought I was far more mature than I actually was that's definitely. impressive <laughs> most 13 year old girls feel so incredibly awkward I was just coming out of what I call UDS ugly duckling syndrome <laughs> I just got in contacts for the first oh, time to replace hot my, uh-huh. my bottle definitely. thick glasses <laughs> okay so now at 13 that's when the crushes start happening was there a crush or were you all just friends no no, no crush yeah I would I was very much a uh, late bloomer. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I was into music and video games uh-huh. and martial arts and chess, <laughs> things like Eclectic. that. Eclectic. You got a nice array. Uh, uh, all the nerdy activities. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say all the introspective kind okay. of uh, introvert activities. Yeah. So you so, see. So like a, when you saw him, was did you just thought a, a, a nice kid, nice guy? <laughs> I remember thinking he was a little strange because I I think I tried to initiate a conversation and conversation was not happening. You were not into it. You just weren't a conversationalist then. I think there's a glorious awkwardness <laughs> in uh, coming into your own at that age. Yeah, and it's I think weird. I, it's it's strange, but a beautiful strange. And I feel like I've kept that. Until adulthood. <laughs> but, you know, I still, you know, I feel like we probably tried to speak. And at that time, anybody who I talked to. Yeah. And she's always been a great communicator, yeah. always magnetic, always yeah. able to communicate she's got it. the emotions that other people are feeling. I, I noticed that about her immediately. Yeah. Um, but there was no crush. We, we, we linked later in college. And that's when we started to really become more friends. You know what's weird? Mm-hmm. I am my friend. First, my first week at Juilliard, I was on the one train with my friend Michelle, and I had no, you know, I hadn't thought about John since band camp several years earlier, which oh, when you're a teenager yeah. feels like yeah. a decade. <laughs> and I see this young man on the train who is singing to himself and playing the air piano. Yes, and yes. people were kind of staring because even in New York, that's not a site that you see every day. And I looked at him and I turned to my friend and I said, that's John Batiste. What is he doing here? And I said, that's the man I'm going to marry someday. Wait. And I just wait, blurted wait, it out wait, and forgot stop about it. it. St- I want to stop for a second. <laughs> On the one train, you knew you were going to marry John? It, it was like one of those things you just say, and I didn't think about it, and I didn't give it much weight. <laughs> so is that the last you see of her before you know she's not feeling well? No. Mm-hmm. We, we saw each other. This is in college, my yeah. first year, her last year of high school then she doesn't end up going to Juilliard she goes to Princeton at Princeton she has this 
um, incredible time. We don't see each other. In passing, we see each other at performances here and there. Right. We have mutual friends, but we're not really as connected. connected. Yeah. Then she has a going away party because she's moving. You move into Paris. And I went to the going away party with a mutual friend of ours. Mm-hmm. But then that was when there was a, a spark at that party, the oh. going away party. But oh, she was going away. Going to Paris. So bye. That it was not you know oh, the time. You were pining, John, ah. a little, a little. You're pining we a little. Had a, a moment. Uh-huh. We had a moment. Well, you got to have a moment. I mean, come on, going to Paris, y'all. There's love in the air. Yes. Okay, so let's fast forward to, how did you learn that Suleika was was ill, was not well? So that same friend Michelle told me one day we. Um, were playing you know my band we would play in public places often Mm -hmm. you know for not for money just to bring Mm -hmm. the music revelry Mm -hmm. joy uh we were playing in the subway one day Mm -hmm. and um Mm -hmm. she told me and i gathered the rest of my band because at this time it was just a few of us Mm -hmm. and i got the rest of them and we went to the hospital Mm -hmm. and and um you know i hadn't heard that she was that ill until that moment Mm -hmm. it was a it was a real moment of clarity that I had to do something and what I do is music I just felt I needed to bring that to the situation to help in any way that I could so that's what I did but that must have been emotional because you didn't expect to to see her in that way I I, I guess there's an impact that a person has on you that you don't know the full extent of until you're in a moment of Mm -hmm. crisis so it felt like I needed to do something in that moment even though we weren't super close friends it felt like oh i really connect with this person i respect this person what she's all about what i know of her this is this is important so that's why we went to the the hospital we played and it was a beautiful experience did you feel like you were doing some good yes i I felt like we were doing good but that's that was a, a special thing for our relationship a special time to to you know you see each other through these different phases and you see what a person is like when they're 13 14 then you see what a person is like at the beginning of college then you see what a person is like when they finish college and going out into the world then you see what a person is like when they're going through tremendous duress the impact of that on their life meeting the family understanding you know how that impacts a whole community but it's also <laughs> a testament to John because John is someone who who shows up in the difficult moments and who keeps on showing up not just for me but for everybody Mm. Um, and he's always been that way (laughs) well i you 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 gotta show (laughs) them you gotta show people you love them Mm -hmm. i I urge everybody out there you show the person in your life who you haven't told or you haven't shown your love show them so what's uh, what's the future with you two well you we were talking about the uh the kids mm-hmm. you that 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 you have in your life that's a beautiful thing to have family we uh we look forward to something in that realm you know there's complications yeah um you know i don't i don't i don't feel like that is ever a barrier to no, family because you can not. you can plenty figure of ways out. to make mm-hmm. a family right yeah I, I think it's possible it's it's all about love well and i'll just say like I think one of my big anxieties coming out of this illness was finding a partner who understood that mm. and who wasn't sort of scared of having hard conversations or awkward mm-hmm. conversations around things. Um, and I remember talking to John about infertility early on mm-hmm. uh, as a result of my treatment. And he said, there are many ways to make a family mm. and it's its own kind of creative act. And you've just been understanding and and open in a way that I wish were the norm um, wow. but that I feel very grateful for. Is she's got to be real. Come. She's a very real person. By the way. Eloquent, <laughs> but she can say <laughs> she's real. So you, it's easy to have real authentic conversations. Well, you know, I think John is one of the most creatively brilliant people I know, but what I've loved observing and learning from is the way creativity informs every aspect of his life, including our relationship. Mm. And so one example of that is we both travel a lot for work in non-pandemic times. 
and because of that have to spend sometimes several weeks apart and he came up with this idea early on in our relationship which was to write each other a letter mm. every day by hand instead of doing like your morning morning pages or writing in a journal he would write a letter by hand take a photo of it and text it to me and I it brought me that. back to those letters <gasps> that I got on the road trip oh, wow and mm. I think that there's sometimes certain things that you can only say in the written word that you don't even maybe know you need to say that come out when you're writing letters. Um, but you're always doing stuff like that. You're always finding creative ways for mm. us to deepen our relationship and to stay connected. By the way, that is the most beautiful and thoughtful and smart. I was thinking, write a letter, but how are you ever going to get it? You take a picture and text it so you can actually read the handwriting. Brilliant. Right? Joel and I are stealing that. Thank you. <laughs> I have to tell you, it's so beautiful because watching your story from the beginning unfold, and I've been I've been reading and watching a lot leading up to this interview, and sitting here in this moment and looking at you two is so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Love is in the air, baby. Oh. Yes. All right, Suleika, John, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you being on Making Space. You know, Candace, it's so hard to believe that you first met Bob Saget back when you were 10 years old. You're 45 now. It's been 35 years of knowing and loving Bob Saget. Do you remember the very first time you met him? I do remember. I, I do. We were doing our pilot episode for Full House, and Bob is so tall. You know, he's 6'4". And I was 10 years old. I'm still not that much taller <laughs> than when I was 10, but, but he kneeled down to me and got eye to eye with me. And he said, hi, I'm Bob and I'm gonna be your dad. I'm playing your dad. So I want you to feel comfortable and we're gonna be friends. And he was just so warm and inviting. And I remember that as a kid, he made me feel instantly comfortable with him and he was just so sweet and it really kicked off an incredible 35 year friendship. Well, for you as a young actress to be able to be yourself, you have to be able to share like what's on your mind, what's on your heart. Mm -hmm. Was he a place that you could go to do that? He was, it's mm -hmm. one, one of the things that made Bob so special. Bob was so vulnerable. He was so emotionally available all the time. And he was really the first person in my life as a man that I saw cry and have those emotions right at the forefront of his conversations. And he wasn't afraid of them. He wasn't embarrassed by them. And that's what made your connection with Bob so great. And that's what made mine so great with him because I felt so safe with him. And it was like, there wasn't anything that I couldn't say or share with him. And he would be right in that moment with you. If you were hurting, he would hurt with you. You would see the tears well up in his eyes. He would breathe with you. He just yeah, was an incredibly available, emotional person. I mean, that's so, I, I, I understand why you didn't forget the moment when you watch a grown man tear up in front of you. Do you remember mm -hmm. anything specific or do you just remember those emotions? Well, there's a, a lot that I remember because we've been friends for so long and, you know, Bob, Bob has dealt with so much death in his life with his sisters and his uncles and and his parents. So Bob was never afraid to talk about it and show it. And, you know, he always dealt with that in a, in a comedic way, but there was always so much sadness and hurt behind it. And that's how he handled it. So there were many times, I mean, I literally growing up with Bob and not just on television, but we were friends. Like Bob is my whole, not only childhood, but my my teenage years, I mean, we used to go to Jerry's Deli all the time and we just drive around and listen to music. And sometimes we'd have those conversations, like he would just like feel his sister's presence. And we would just sit and feel that, you know? 
Bob is a remarkable person and um, I, I just, I've never had a friendship like the one I've had with him. And it, that's what, why it makes it so hard. <laughs> you said Bob is a remarkable person. You talk about him like he's here still. I can't, I, I can't believe he's gone forever. I just can't. I, my, my brain has not um, comprehended that yet. Um, you know, I think for, for even TV viewers, again, you might think like, oh, he, he played your dad on TV, but Bob was so much more than that. I mean, really one of my closest friends for 35 years. So to, to think that, um, he's not here and we're not going to have that last, you know, another joke or another hug or, um, just another bit of ridiculousness in life is, is, um, uh, it's almost unbearable for me to think about. What did you lose when he passed? Um, Bob was available and there for everyone that he knew but bob bob was that person that no matter what happened bob would drop anything for you in a second in a heartbeat and you didn't even have to be his best friend for him to do that mm -hmm. i mean that's how huge his heart was but when you know being someone that was very close to him losing him it, it is um He, I, I don't selfishly, I just think he's just, he, he was just someone that you could count on and would love you no matter what, and just, and be there. And so that's, there are very few friends in life like that. And that is the hardest part of the loss is just that, that friendship that's unconditional that, mm. I mean, it's, it's mm. a lifetime, but I guess our lifetime is you know, finished on earth <laughs> for now. For now. It's a good way to end that sentence for now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. It's funny because when I watched John Mayer break down and I watched John Stamos and I watched you and I watched all these people in his life, I don't think America realized just how many people he touched. The number of people who have come out, the tributes, the beautiful uh, fundraising events that are going on. I don't think I've seen this in my lifetime with someone in Hollywood that is so universally loved and cared for. And it, you know, it just, it just struck me. He was all that, wasn't he? He really was all that. It is remarkable to me. I mean, I've always known how special he is, his close friends do, but Bob was friends with everyone. And 
and from, from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And so to see so many people coming together, I'm glad that the world is getting to hear how much more there was to Bob. Um, he was a great humanitarian. He tirelessly raised money for scleroderma uh, research foundation over the years. He, again, he would drop anything for anyone and he just had a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, he made you laugh. Like he was just, it was the best combination of, of all different traits that you could imagine together. And that was Bob. You know, you remember the first time you met him. And I wonder what was the last communication you had with him? Um, it was just a few, just two weeks before he passed. I'm actually gonna grab my, my phone. <laughs> I'm so scared that I'm gonna pull up his text and then accidentally delete it one day. Like it scares me so much because I don't ever wanna lose this. But um, Bob and I talked just a couple weeks before he passed and um, <laughs> we were gonna have dinner and we got into a little tiff and his flight was delayed. We ended up not having dinner, but in, in Bob fashion, the next day he wrote me like what would be pages long of a text. And he was apologizing, saying he was cranky and he was just so, he was just so sorry. And um, he said, oh, now I feel even worse. I was so wrong. You're like my favorite person on the earth. And I acted like Dolly. I was getting ready to take a late flight and I was annoyed. Dolly was his mom. <laughs> and he said, you're one of the few that understands that if I act like Dolly, I'm not the best at my game that day, ha ha. And Bob went on and on and on in the text. And he said at the end, I love you more, I love you more, um, I love you more for the trouble you're giving me, if that's even possible. Mm -hmm. And I wrote back, I love you. I could never be mad at you. Roll my eyes at you? Yes, but never mad. And I love that you being Dolly, that made me laugh out loud. I loved your mom. And he just wrote back, I loved you. My mom loved you too. Mm -hmm. How you start things in life and how... <laughs> are very important pieces and that's yeah. a beautiful beautiful last exchange i love your sweatshirt everyone's talking about your sweatshirt it says what love like jesus hug like bob, bob is that right Zagget. bob Zagget. okay brilliant a b like uh, it's raising money isn't it it is actually i just designed the sweatshirt selfishly for for me i for kelly for, I, I made 10 of them. And, um, you know, I don't think there's a, a person that can showcase love for the world more than Jesus, but Bob gave the best hugs ever. So those are like the two that have been put on the pedestal for me, love like Jesus and hug like Bob Saget. And it, it, a bunch of people said, oh, can I get one? Can I get one? So I, teamed up with the shop forward and all the proceeds, hundred percent of them have gone to the scleroderma research foundation and we've raised over $200,000 so far. Wow. That's yeah. One pleasure that you, that you got for you and Kelly and the rest. That's amazing. I know he, you know, I think it was such a shock to everybody when he passed. Did he, and since you were in more communication with him than most, did he seem like healthy? Okay. Like I think everyone yes. was, I mean, as I said, we, he was, he was on the road doing a standup. He was just loving it, was healthy, was fine. And yeah, Bob just also was not, didn't complain in that way. He just was going and he was on a roll. That's why it was so shocking mm -hmm. because he had done the show that night. I mean, what a way to go 
in that sense, he, he, he left us, but he had just finished what he loved doing two hours of stand up, which is almost unheard of. He had like an extra long night because he, it was just going so well. Mm -hmm. And that was it. You know, I, that's why it was so, it was so shocking to all of us. Cause there were no, there were any signs of <laughs> that anything would be wrong. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to the thing about Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Was he proud of your career? <laughs> Bob was so proud of my career. He really was. He was a big cheerleader for me. I mean, I know now as a parent, when you watch someone grow up from a child to an adult and see what they've done. He was so incredibly supportive. And that's what was so awesome about Bob because we had this close friendship. And, you know, if people see Bob stand up, they, you know, he has a different side to him in his stand up. It's not family friendly stand up. And so that would always be a question like, how, how can you guys be friends? And it's like, well, I grew up with Bob, so I understand his sense of humor. I too have a sense of humor, <laughs> but I can also separate that person that's, you know, on the stage making jokes to get the laugh and the real heart behind a person and their love and their friendship and their kindness. And, and so Bob was so wonderful in that way and supportive of me and and yet would tell me, like, he would invite me to things all the time in the stand-up world, but then say, you're invited, but don't come. <laughs> don't come because I know you, this will, like, cross a line for you. You're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to laugh. So, like, I love you. You can come if you want to, but don't come. Brilliant. Brilliant. And that's, like, a, what a real friend does. Just lastly, Candice, I know he was proud of your career. We all follow your career. I know you always have another project in the hopper. So are you working on something right now? What do you have that's coming out? I have another Aurora Tea Garden mystery that is airing on February 20th. This is our 18th movie in the franchise. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot. That's on the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel. And the special thing about this one is called Haunted by Murder. These are all family friendly, by the way. You can watch them with your kids, but... This is about a haunted house, and my daughter is actually in this movie. And Lexa Doig, who plays my best friend in the series, her daughter is also in this movie. And the two of them are playing us, our characters, as teenagers. Okay. So we have some flashbacks, and it's like, it's amazing. <laughs> it's really oh, fun. That, 
That is awesome. Candace, thank you so much. What a beautiful and tender tribute uh, to Bob. Boy, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Hoda. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. Cuba magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering you on. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today. 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 Today is where the games begin. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. In the wake of the sudden passing of beloved comedian Bob Saget, friends and fans and colleagues have been sharing countless stories of his remarkable kindness and generosity. But for the first time now, we're about to hear from the person who knew him best recently and really just maybe loved him the most, I although there's so. a good competition for that. I'd say so. Kelly Rizzo, what a wonderful, wonderful human being. I got a chance to share an emotional conversation with Kelly. While she says this is the most difficult time in her life, she also says it's also easy to know what her mission will be moving forward. She says it's spreading Bob's legacy of love and laughter. Kelly, first of all, I just want to say the entire country feels like we're holding your hands, your collective hands. I want to know just how you're doing today. Well, I was just telling some of my family that today's a little bit, there's a little bit more of a sense of calm. I think you get to a point where your body will just physically not let you cry anymore, or at least all day. Still, every second is is horrible, but you start to come to terms with it a little bit. Six years ago, Bob Saget and Kelly Rizzo, a food and travel blogger from Chicago, met after connecting on Instagram. Married since 2018, friends say they had a love for the ages. I'm watching you and you're sitting in your home that you shared with with Bob, and I just wondered if you're remembering all the the little things, if that pops up. Well, it's impossible here not to, but the support has been, that, that has been the one silver lining from this, is the incredible outpouring of love and support, not only from just everybody that loved Bob, but also for me and just from his friends and family, it's been, I don't know how else I'd be getting through this right now. The number of people, Kel, who loved Bob is just, I, I can't even quantify. I heard someone say that Bob was an I love you guy. He put it all out there. He told everyone that he loved. And I mean, quite frankly, anyone he met and even spent any time with at all, he told them he loved them endlessly and tirelessly. And that was his entire message. If you knew Bob, and he loved you, you knew it. There was never, ever a doubt in your mind. I mean, even at his at, at his memorial, there were a lot of people there and every single person was pretty much like, oh, I talked to Bob last week. I'm like, hmm. how did he have the time hmm. to talk to everybody and tell everybody that he loved them all the time? It was just amazing. We had an interview with, with Mike Young, who's, you know, a comedian and dear friend of Bob's. He said something, Kel, that struck um, struck me. He said, most comedians, after a stand-up gig, they catch the last flight home. He said, not Bob. Bob wanted to catch the first flight home. He wanted to be with you, Kelly. And he said that that their love was, was perfect. Yeah. Sorry. Um, that was what was always so special is every time he would be out of town, he would always try to 
he would, you know, he would work so hard and he, um, you know, he'd love to sleep in, but when he was away, he would always try to, he would still wake up at, you know, go to bed at two and then wake up at four so he could be on the 6 a.m. flight so he could come home just so we could spend time together. So, you know, he valued every single second that we had together. So that's why it's, you know, this is so heartbreaking. But at the same time, I know that we, you know, every second that we had together was just maximized to the fullest. And we absolutely just, there was nothing, you know, left unsaid and nothing left on the table. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I'm just trying to hold on to, you know. You know, I feel like everyone felt like they knew Bob because everyone mm -hmm. grew up watching him or, or even young kids now were watching him again on TV. But uh, Kel, who was the Bob Saget like at dinner when there was no audience? It was still the same. And he just tried to make everybody feel special and happy and comfortable. And it's funny, like our, our dry cleaners, he has... I always joke that he had a deeper relationship with them than he had with anybody, you know, like they love him and he loved them. And his constant message was just treat everybody with kindness. Cause you know, he'd gone through so much in his life and he knew how hard life could be. And so he always was just so kind and loving to everybody. And he was just, I'm sorry. He was just such a, he was just the best man I've ever known in my life. And he was just so kind and so wonderful. And everybody that was in his life knew it. <laughs> and even anybody that would just casually meet him was like, wow, this was a special guy. And he was yours. And by all accounts, he was living his best life. Did you think he was feeling okay during, during all this time? All I'll say is that he was very happy and he was just thrilled to be back out on the road. And he was also very sensitive and just all the weight of everything going on in the world right now. He, it was just weighing very heavily on him. And that's mm. why he felt more compelled than ever to make people laugh and bring people together. And he did it up until the very last moments. You know, we've all lost someone in our life. And sometimes you hang on to the last text, the last conversation, <laughs> the last connection. Is that is that Kel the case with you? I'm just very grateful that it was all, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. It was, I think I said, I love you dearly. And he said, I love you endlessly. And then he mm -hmm. said, I said, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. And then, you know, it was just all very, it was just all love. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. that is that's beautiful, Kel. Um, when we were seeing the images of everyone saying goodbye at the funeral, is there anything that you feel comfortable sharing about what it was like? Were you able to speak? I don't think I'll get too much into it, but I did speak, and it was just the whole thing, as painful as it was, was beautiful to be surrounded by so many people who loved him and who loved each other. I can't even verbalize the level of support. I'm so grateful for it. One of the things that he was very passionate about was uh, scleroderma that took his sister Gay's life. And one of the most beautiful things of this was n nobody said, hey, everybody go donate to scleroderma in Bob's honor. But do you know what everyone did? They donated. They, they did it. Bob was dedicated to finding a cure for scleroderma, an autoimmune disease that took his sister's life. The Scleroderma Research Foundation estimates that Bob raised more than $26 million for the SRF in his lifetime. He had three life's works. One was his children, next was comedy, and then the SRF. He spent over 30 years tirelessly working so hard to try to find a cure for scleroderma. So that's why anything that I can do to help keep that legacy going and just help with the SRF because it meant so much to him. As I'm sitting here reflecting and sitting with you is that Bob spent his life and he sort of united people just by being himself. He wasn't trying. And in his passing, he's doing it again. I've never seen anything like this. It's it's unbelievable. The just the outpouring, but the consensus overall of what an amazing person he was, whether people knew him or didn't know him, because one way or another, he was in your living room since the 80s, yeah. or 
you know, you went to shows, I mean, whatever it is, it was, um, he felt like he was everyone's, you know, dear friend. Nobody will ever be like Bob. And I think he just kind of lived his life unafraid, which is what struck me. He found love again in his 60s. He told his friends, I love you. He was back on stage. Like the guy was fearless. And I think that's what struck me about it. And she loved all parts of him. But, and even, you know, on stage, he had that like that raunchy side. She yeah. was like, but that was part of him. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't afraid. No, he's truthful. Yeah, he you really know? told the truth. It's just like, it just is so moving. I hope it's comforting to her that everyone, so many people just mm -hmm. feel so connected to him and are just missing him and loving him. And what a wonderful legacy to leave. Well, one of the things that's become obvious over the last couple of weeks is Bob Saget was a special guy. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Yeah. Also pretty special. Uh, amazingly special. Yeah. And Bob made friendships late in life. You saw John Mayer just mm -hmm. sobbing after Bob passed. And you just thought, like, wow. He kept, he, his circle kept yeah. getting bigger and bigger. here it is time for pop star plus and coming up on today's show we're celebrating the fresh prince of bel-air with the new reboot set to be released after the super bowl we've got an interview with karen parsons who played hillary on the original and a great moment from our vaults with the one and only will smith himself but first let's see what was going on on today's pop star First up, breaking news here on Popstart. Hot off the press is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced the lineup of nominees for this year's class. Here are some of the names in the running on the ballot for the very first time. Wow. Yes. One and only American Daddy. treasure, the commander of them all, Dolly Parton. Yes. yes. Finally. Uh, joined Dr. by Mike. Eminem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Savannah, oh. are you listening? Yes. Duran Duran. Yes. Mike what? Ritchie, how's yes. that already? Lionel. Lionel. Carly Carly Simon. Oh, wow. All of them. And nominated once more, again more, is music more. and Twitter icon Diane more. Warwick. Yes. Yes. She's joined by fellow artist Pat Benatar. Yes. And how is it taking us along for Beck again? Beck. What is that? How many kids? Be there are 17 kids? nominees total oh. this year. Oh, okay. okay. We will find out who gets in wow. when they announce Dolly. them. Come on. Dolly's not in? Well, we're going to find out in May. Wow. Okay. All right, next up, this series looks great on Paramount Plus. It's called The Offer. The new series is heading to Paramount Plus, anyway. It's set to tell the dramatic real life story behind the making of The Godfather. Oh. In the trailer, we get a first look at Miles Teller as award winning producer Albert S. Ruddy and a peek at his desperate fight to get the Mario Puzo iconic gangster novel onto the big screen. This is a story about family. It's Shakespeare. Agencies won't touch us. It's epic. You want a big producer? Bang, borrow, steal, do whatever it takes. Gangster movies are dead. We will stop out the hatred. If I say I'm gonna handle something, I'm gonna handle and the it. the prejudice. You're still gonna try to make this thing? Sinatra wants us to shut the picture down. What is our opening line? I believe in America. I mean, it just looks good. Brilliant. 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 Watching 1883 Great. on Paramount Plus right now. This is going to come yeah. out. They're doing yeah. some good things over Great. there. Show also stars Ted Lasso's Juno Temple. That's who plays Keely. Oh, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, she's great in it too. And American Crime Stories. Colin Hanks is in it. It's a great cast. The Offer is the name of it. And starts streaming oh, on April good. 28th. I give it a good sell there. Yeah. Yeah. Real yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It was earnest. It was okay. hard. Yeah. I like that. Finally, our Super Bowl commercial kickoff all week. We're giving you a sneak peek at some of the biggest ads for the big game. We used to wait for the big game to see all these yeah. ads. Yeah. Yeah. Now we just yeah. get them here. That's it. Roll this morning we've got a first look at Lay's Potato Chips, their first Super Bowl campaign in 17 years, huh. and it stars the very funny Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen. Here it is. Nervous? Oh, Lay's brings back so many good memories. Remember our road trip in 97? Our first real heart to heart. I've never seen any of your movies. Not even the ones we're in together. Remember when you bought your first house? You ready? Seth, do you? I do. And Janet, do you? That's a yes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Logan actually created that ad with his oh. longtime friend and writing partner, Evan Goldberg. <laughs> they worked together on Super Bad, and this is the end. Oh. And don't forget to tune in, of course, to The Big Game. It's next Sunday, February 13th. Where else? Right here on NBC. And, of course, streaming on Peacock. Awesome. And that is okay. your pop star today. Love it.
Let's get to a few more headlines after all the show is called Pop Star Plus. First up, and just like that, more good news for fans of the new Sex and the City series after revealing that HBO Max will release a behind the scenes documentary following Thursday's season finale. Sarah Jessica Parker is giving hope this may not be the end of the new chapter. SJP telling Variety that she and showrunner Michael Patrick King are already talking about a second season. The actress and executive producer sharing in an interview, there feels like there's momentum. As for the return of Kim, as for the return of Kim Cattrall's character, the beloved Samantha Jones, don't hold your breath, Parker and King both saying that there are no plans to bring her back into the story at this time but maybe later, who knows? Next up, David Letterman, the man who started it all, returned to Late Night on Tuesday to celebrate the show's 40th anniversary with current host Seth Meyers. And taking a look down memory lane, Dave shared how before he landed in the Late Night time slot, he had a short-lived stint hosting during our current Today Show hours. We had blown up the NBC daytime schedule a year right. previously. I, uh, we had a show, a lot of us had a show that we thought was just great. And it was on for 90 minutes live, like 9 to 1030 on, on NBC. And it replaced two or three uh, game shows. And it, it turned out uh, America didn't want them replaced. <laughs> Cer certainly didn't want them replaced by me. But when, when you're Letterman said his daytime show only lasted for a couple of months. A year later, it did land him an 11-year run as the host of Late Night. And those are your headlines up next. Karen Parsons, who played Hillary on the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, shares her favorite moments from the show. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus in just 11 days. Peacock, of course, part of our parent company, NBC Universal, is going to be releasing the highly anticipated Bel Air. So today we thought we'd take a moment to check out, well, the roots of that reboot. We're gonna get a visit from Karen Parsons who played Hillary on the original show. Here is today's flashback. I think I probably hear the line, Daddy, can I have $300 more than anything? Dad, I need $300. <laughs> How would I describe Hillary Banks? You know, it's the way I've described her has changed over the years. I still think she's incredibly self-centered um, and she's just myopic. You know, she's she's been grown up as daddy's little girl, first child, and it was a girl. You know, I just imagine that they dressed her up in all kinds of little fancy, little frilly things and everything she wanted. They, you know, they gave her and I have, a, my first child was a daughter. So I'm starting to even understand it in that regard. I think I underestimated a lot of things about her. I think she's she's very determined. She's so self-centered and seemingly myopic, but at the same time, she's so she she's very focused and determined and has confidence. You know, the the confidence we all wish we had. Com if she wants to do something, she knows she can do it. She's going to do it because that's what she wants, and that's it. And she's going to get it because she always gets what she wants. You know, so it's, nothing stops her. And I think that's a quality of Hillary's that I love and I wish I could have a little bit more of. Um, and I do think that she has a lot more heart. You know, she has a lot more heart than she might always get credit for. <laughs> Look, th there he goes. <laughs> Yeah, 
the, the bungee jumping episode will forever be my bittersweet um, episode because I remember when I read the script for the first time, there was this horrible heartbreak of, oh my gosh, Brian Stokes Mitchell's not going to be on the show anymore. Because Brian, who played Trevor, was so wonderful. I loved working with him. I loved the Hillary Trevor romance. It was really fun. And so it was horribly disappointing to read like, oh no, you know, it, Trevor's gone, Brian's gone. And then you just see the way it all, how it happened and how it played out. And then of course that's the, the, the laugh, the part that was so funny. Yes. Yes, what? Yes, your highness. <laughs> I think my favorite episode still for me to do, and I liked it, how it came out too, was in the first season when Hillary drops out of college and is blackmailed by both Will and Carlton. You know, and when I go to my brother for help, um, I'll never forget when we taped that episode. And it was the first season, and so I didn't know a lot of how the audience was taking Hillary. You know, I hadn't had a lot of feedback from people yet, but I was assuming people probably weren't going to like her that much because everyone loved Will, and she had this eh, kind of thing with him. And uh, we got to the part where I go to Carlton for help and say he's making me, you know, clean his dirty draws or lucky draws or whatever, and he says, will you clean mine? Is he making you clean his room? No. Will you clean mine? <laughs> and when that happened, he turned on me. The audience did not just start clapping. They started stomping in the stands. They started stomping their feet and howling. And we were trying to keep a straight face and stay in the scene. And if you see, watch the scene, you can see as they cut back and forth, you can see me kind of smiling and trying to play it off as a, I can't believe you smile. <laughs> because I couldn't keep it down. I couldn't believe they hated her so much. They were loving seeing her get hers. I'd like to finish my story if that's okay with you, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, the whole thing, barking like a dog at the table and how we choreographed, put that whole thing together was, um, was really fun. You know, I was really lucky to, to get a lot of really funny lines and I forgot how funny they were until like, you know, recently when I found them as memes and stuff. <laughs> One I totally forgot about from the first season that I saw as a meme was, um, good God, who shot the couch? Good God, who shot the couch? <laughs> there are so many good ones. Like, how do I put this nicely? I'm just too good for you. As long as neither of us are doing anything, why don't we not do it together? Oh, well, that's very sweet, but how can I put this nicely? I'm too good for you. <laughs> you know, there are these just lines that were just um, her just being honest in her own Hillary way. <laughs> Will! Hill! <laughs> Daddy, I need $500. Like what you see on The Fresh Prince is Will. That is Will. More than any other film you'll see. I remember I saw Shark's Tale, the animated film that he did. And I was telling him, I said, I, was, I saw Shark's Tale and it reminded me, it just made me feel like I was with you so much, like more than anything else I've seen. He said, because in that film, he said, the only other thing besides Shark's Tale where they let me do whatever I wanted was Fresh Prince, just being myself and do what I wanted. So it was like, if he's playing a fish or if he's a will on the will on the Fresh Prince, that's like, that's really him. Just this big personality, loves to laugh, loves to, is so curious and so intensely bright, you know, he's always, you can see it when you watch him. I mean, I watch, if I watch an interview or, or on something, I still see that laser focused look because his mind is going and all the, everything's like churning and he's, he's always finding excitement in things. And we've got more with Karen in just a moment, including her favorite Fresh Prince guest stars. That's coming up. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. And we're back. Karen Parsons starred as Will's cousin Hillary on the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air for six seasons. Here's more now of our conversation about the beloved sitcom. We had so many great guest stars. Um, Jaja Gabor let me wear her ring all day. That was cool. Um, so I like she gets points for that. You know, I love that we had Milton Berle on the show, but I never interacted with him. He was apparently real, a real curmudgeon. Um, <laughs> I love uh, Tom Jones is probably one of my very favorites. I was really excited that Tom Jones was on the show. Um, but my very favorite person to act with, hands down, was Regis Philbin. All these people on the show, but I will tell you, Regis Philbin, we were talk show hosts. I was co-hosting with the guest hosting with him. And, um, and he's so dry. He was so funny. His timing was incredible. And it was just a real fun game you know, tossing it back and forth. I would have loved to work with him regularly. You spend more on clothes than most small countries spend on grain. <laughs> I feel like I learned a lot from James as a person and as an actor. That's hard, because it's. I feel like it's so much in me. And he was so generous. You know, I'll never get over the episode that sticks with so many people that Will, when Will's father left, How come you don't want me, man? And I remember Will really wanted that to work and him going to James and talking to him and, and giving him advice on things and being really helpful in a really quiet way, in a very quiet way. He was not heavy handed about anything like that. Um, but one thing James did that was really beautiful is he, he saw things in you that you might not see in yourself and he saw possibilities. He used to really want me to play Lady Macbeth it made me look at myself differently. It made me look at myself as an actor differently. It, it made you feel, it was nice to be seen, but it was also interesting to, to recognize someone seeing you through a, a very different lens than maybe you saw yourself and credit yourself. And he did that not just with me, you know, with Tatiana, um, he had the same thing about some, something he wanted her to do that he really saw. And I think it, it landed on her or she saw that for herself. And he was just, he was beautiful that way, that he would look at you and say, you know, it's like what you're capable of, you know what you can do, something so different from how you might see yourself. And, um, and it made you kind of expand. Yeah, he was, he was amazing. You know, one of my favorite things about the relationship between the siblings, the whole family, and really just the whole makeup of the, of the family and the cast, including Jeffrey, was how, different we all were. We were all kind of such different personalities. I don't think anybody was like another person in this, this whole cast of characters. And that was really a wonderful thing, especially for a black family on screen. Like whenever I see scenes with Hillary and Ashley, it's like oil and water in a way. Not in a, not in a that they don't, that they don't like each other, but that they, they're just so different, you know? And Ashley's so kind to her sister who she feels 
she's her big sister, but she kind of feels for her because it's almost like somebody dropped Hillary on her head. <laughs> so I kind of the way Ashley speaks to her a little bit, you know, recognizing that she's different. And, um, and I love that, you know, Hillary still feels like whatever she's saying is right. And that's just the way the world is. I think if, I think Hillary now would be the queen of the internet. I, I have no no doubt she'd be the Instagram queen. To me, that's so obvious. I remember once I thought of it once, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's where she lives," you know, and that's what she was made for. <laughs> she would own it. <laughs> she would own Instagram. And coming up, Will Smith's visit today in a very '90s getup as Fresh Prince was at its peak. That's coming up in the Vault next. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. The year was 1991, and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air was all the rage when Will Smith visited today to chat about his role and the show's success. Take a look. Tonight's airing of the NBC comedy Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is going to feature back-to-back -back segments. And the two segments will be bridged by the premiere of the Prince's newest music video. Will Smith is the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. How you been? Good morning. All right, man. How you doing? All right. First off, why two segments? Two episodes in one night? Uh, well, what it is is NBC has been juggling things to, to put behind the show, trying to see what works and, and what happens. Like last week, they had the Cosby show at 8 and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air at 8.30, just trying to see what happens in the slot. So oh. this, is, this is just something else. Experiment. Just to, yeah, yeah, experiment. I saw, I saw recently where you said that y you weren't embarrassed, but that you thought the first few episodes of Fresh <sighs> Prince, your acting was terrible. Is that oh. true? Oh, yes, very much so. I got, I got to around the sixth or the seventh episode, and I was totally new to acting. I had, you know, no formal theatrical training, and this is the, f this is the first thing I've, I ever did was the pilot of the show. So, you know, I'm, I'm just giving it my best shot. And then what happens, I'm looking back, and as I'm hanging with actors and things like that, you start to see the different tricks and everything that they do. And I looked at myself, and it was like, ugh. And if you watch the first three episodes, next time they play, I'm lipping everyone's lines. Because I memorized the whole script. I didn't just memorize my lines. So it's like, as you're talking, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for your Yeah, yeah you know, waiting for, for my next one. <laughs> so it's, uh, it was like, ooh. If I ad lib, I lose you, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm gone. As you watch today, do you, I mean, do you feel totally comfortable with being an actor yet? I'm starting to feel more comfortable. It's just, it's just so many things to learn. And what, like, I, I like Denzel a lot, and, and I study people. And it's like, when they wipe their head or something like that, that's planned. Uh -huh. You know, every, everything, they plan everything. It's like there's hours and hours of preparation that, that go into playing their parts. But I, I never prepare. I learn my lines and show up <laughs> and do it. You and I last had a chance to talk back in September uh -huh. um, when, when the show was just about to debut. And, and, and back then, everybody was saying, oh, this is going to be the big mega uh -huh. blockbuster of all uh -huh. time. The show, the show did well. Uh -huh. Finished 38th, but it wasn't the, the mega hit 
yeah. that other people expected. Did they expect too much? Were the expectations unrealistic? Um, well, again, I, I was blind going in, so I just I knew that you know that everyone was hyping it up, and he's going to be the next this and next that. I was like, oh, please, just let me get one episode behind me. Let me just let me do one first. So it's like I, I pretty much had to get away from that, not pay attention to what was going on too much. Um, for me, the whole year was a learning process. Yeah. So uh, as I learned and everything, so now I can have something to do with what the hype is going to be next year. Nice. So, you know, it's, I, I was blind. It was like, hey, they, this is their job. I got mine. Let's show a clip of that learning process. This Absolutely. is from tonight's episode when you're um, asking Jeff to go on out with your sister. Okay. Think. Okay, Jazz. Um, <laughs> look, you know I'd do anything for you. You're like a brother to me. Check. Which means that your sister should be like a sister to me, not a girlfriend. I mean, just think, if it doesn't work out, it could jeopardize our friendship. I'm willing to take that risk. <laughs> yeah, my brother, I'm gonna have to get us some serious, serious thought. All right, well, can I bring her by just to meet you sometime? Yeah, that's chill. Cool. Tonight, 8 o'clock sharp, and try and smell good. <laughs> Yo, big boy, give your sweet mama some sugar. <laughs> All right, let's talk music. Now, you're putting the video between the two between segments. The two Aren't shows. they really different audiences? I mean, the, the audience for your music and the audience for your TV show? Uh, I don't think so. I think that, that my music audience is a big chunk of the television audience. I think there's a, there's a few new viewers that, that haven't heard Parents Just Don't Understand or Mike yeah. Tyson or Nightmare or any of my other records. Um, <clears throat> I think that the character is pretty much the same. It's all me. What I'm giving on the television show is just myself, and what I give in the music is just myself. For those who may not know, before you, you were on television, you, you were a recording artist, yes. along with DJ Jazzy Jeff. But, but the TV show has made it difficult for you to keep up with your music, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, very, very much so. Um, it took us a year to do our album, and our album is finally finished, but it took us a year to do it, because we, we were trying to do, I'm in Los Angeles, and Jeff is in Philadelphia, so he has sort of a fax thing going with this album, you know, going back and forth and back and forth. But it worked out, turned out good. The album's real good. <laughs> you figure you're gonna have to choose between music and acting? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, what, what I can do now is we, we have a pretty long hiatus in, in, from the acting world, so during the summer I can work on my albums. Nice. The summertime. <laughs> we'll take care of yourself, will you? <laughs> you too. Always fun to take a trip down memory lane. Don't forget the reboot, Bel Air premieres Super Bowl Sunday. You know it's good when it premieres there. February 13th on Peacock. Check out this next conversation right here on Popstar Plus. Okay, I love this quoted by series, but not as much as I love this guy, Pat Monahan. Pat is the, as you guys know, he's the lead singer of Train. He's one of my favorite guys. And Pat, I mean, your music's so soulful, it always hits me at a spot where I just go like, ouch, I can't, I just, it's special. So I wondered, is there a quote that you have that you feel like is kind of a little bit of a guiding light for you? There is. It's it's one that I didn't give you guys. I'm going to tell you the one that I that I gave you. But uh, I've been looking for the one that really did influence me. I, I used to have to go to my uncle's uh, CPA firm, and he had in like old English this uh, saying that said, good things cometh to those who wait, as long as those who waiteth worketh their ass off. <laughs> and I couldn't find it. Uh, so the closest one that I could find was this by Thomas Edison, which is opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. And that made a lot of sense to me because, uh, you know, especially young people are there like, oh, I want to be famous. I want to I want to be a TikTok star, which is awesome because it's such a cool opportunity. But it takes a lot to, to do those things. And. That's, uh, that's why I love this quote. So do you think that you're where you are today because of hard work or because of talent? Which wins if you're weighing the two? Well, I had to have a little bit of talent, but it was the hard work that really did it. Because I realized early on that I wasn't as talented as Kurt Cobain and so many other 
very talented people. And it didn't probably come easy to them either, but it sure seemed like it did. So I just had to outwork everybody. And honestly, I still feel like I have to. So、oh, even、right. being in the music industry for 30 years, I hope to have 30 more, but it won't come for free, you know? Wow. Well, I think that's good for a lot of folks who are watching and wondering. Like, I wonder if、but、I can you're the hardest.、Them. You're the hardest working human <laughs> being in, you know, in the world. All right. Hey, Pat, thank you, honey. I appreciate you. Thanks, Soda. And that does it for this edition of Popstar Plus. Be sure and join us again tomorrow. We're going to be catching up with snowboarding star Chloe Kim as the Winter Olympics gets underway. We'll see you then. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long、oh, way of man, asking、yeah. who's your favorite、okay. character you've ever、oh, played? The、right. unicorn. The unicorn. You've got to have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart today with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit <laughs> now. How、wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> okay. All you gotta do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite、yes. franchises ever、wow. ambush makeovers. Okay. <laughs> look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> will you、okay. judge us in a cook off? I、yeah. will, and、okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. It is a big anniversary. Real big. 70 years, you get a big statue. Very、right, first, good morning. Good morning, tough news. First, here's the news. Good morning, everyone.、Hi. Good morning. Welcome to today. Welcome to today. In your neck of the woods. Happy、Being、birthday. In the history books, it's hard to open. You know what? When you sit with that and think this program has been on the air for 70 years. Older than all of us. Really, it just kind of blows your mind. And it also makes you feel kind of small in its shadow. Cuba tonight is an island in revolt. The nation and the world today mourn the 46 year old chief executive. These are the honor guards of President Kennedy. Dr. Martin Luther King died violently last night in Memphis, Tennessee. The Vietnam War will continue. Hell no, we will go! The biggest White House scandal in a century. Well, I'm not a crook. No justice, no Violence erupted after the acquittal of four white policemen in the beating trial of black motorist Rodney King, and it went on through the night. A Thursday morning that finds this country at war with Iraq. The tsunami was spawned by a magnitude nine quake off the coast of Indonesia. Help me, please, please. One of the darkest days in American history. The U.S. Capitol under siege, stormed by an angry mob of Trump supporters. Welcome, I'm Bryant Gumbel. The Today Show was. Always on in my house growing up. We're going to be talking with the man who holds the second highest office in the land. He is, of course, Vice President George Bush. And every morning, I got ready to go to school watching Brian interview newsmakers and presidents and heads of state and athletes and actors. And when the Today Show went on the air,、uh, I mean, TVs weren't being turned on. If you turned on your TV, you got. I mean, that was it, and there was a, a test pattern. Was, so,、uh, you know, Pat Weaver, the president of NBC, says, you know what? People get up, they want to turn their TVs on. They got this new box sitting in their living room. Let's give them something to, to watch. And they, they started the Today Show. And, and look, a lot of folks thought, you're nuts. This is crazy. Well, here we are. Good morning to you. The very first good morning of what I hope. I suspect will be a great many. Good morning between you and I. Here it is, Jack said, January 14th, 1952, when NBC begins a new program called Today. Historically, for 70 years, going back to Dave Garraway, was 
You never felt like you were being talked at. It was more like a friend or a family. It's a part of a television show that tries not only to fill in the world on the news every morning, but to be kind of a friend in the house. Morning, all. I'm Tom Brokaw here with Jane Pauley. Good morning. The newest member, old Uncle Willard. The newest I think the secret sauce to me and why, why this show has lasted 70 years is it's simple. It's the simplest thing of all. It's good company. We'll sit with you. Sure. You having breakfast? Okay. Having a crummy morning? We're here. Having the best morning of your life? We're still here. Your kid's not eating his Cheerios? We're here. You know, kids are late to school? We get it. I think it's just good company. And I think that people like that. I like good company. And I feel like that that's something that we have provided. We, I'm saying, the Today Show family for 70 years. You sit with us and we'll make, we'll, we'll start your day off okay. So happy that you are joining us on this Tuesday morning. I think this show has so much ambition because the idea was always to be news first, to set the agenda, to set the table, to inform viewers, but also do it with this beautiful mix of lightness and humor and joy, a little weather, a little celebrity, a little razzle dazzle, but always first and foremost, the news. What do people need to know to start their days? Savannah Hoda, good morning uh, to both of you. We are in Lafayette Park. We are, as you can see behind me, just steps away from the White House. This is the same spot where I stood last night uh, as violence erupted. I think when the Today Show is at its best is when something has happened either late at night or overnight and we are there seven o'clock eastern giving you a front row seat to whatever that is see that fire uh, that's been set uh, just in front of the white house outside lafayette park i remember when i was growing up the first time i marveled at how impressive it was it's was 1995 it was the Oklahoma City bombing. Good morning. You're looking at a live picture of what's left of the federal building in Oklahoma City, the site of the worst terrorist bombing to ever hit the United States. I was a teenager and I woke up that morning and there was Bryant Gumbel in front of um, that hollowed out building. You can see the federal building right behind me or what's left of it, nine stories with a hole blown in the north wall. And I remember thinking even then, wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. And we still do it. Uh, when disaster strikes, we're there first thing in the morning. When something amazing happens, when there's some sort of like great inspiration, when the Chilean miners were hoisted to safety, we're right there. A lot of excitement, a lot of emotion here as the rescues are now continuing ahead of schedule. The 11th miner to be brought out, Jorge Galleguillos, as you see there with that newly grown beard. He was the 11th, as I said, to be rescued. When I'm headed out in the middle of the night sometimes to, to breaking news for the show, in my mind, I'm thinking, I've got millions of people who need me to get this right. Savannah, good morning to you again. Derek Chauvin waking up at a correctional facility about 30 minutes from where I'm standing right now. A moment, 11 long months in the making for George Floyd's family. Whether it's a riot, whether it's uh, a hurricane, whether it's Notre Dame on fire. Now it's become a bit of a solemn spectacle. Folks still stopping, all of them looking up, wondering how long is it going to take to rebuild Notre Dame? There are people who are going to wake up at seven o'clock and who are going to be looking to me to tell them what happened and to get it right. Breaking news on a Tuesday morning. I remember covering the Boston Marathon attack, and that was really early on at my time in the Today Show. And we are learning more about the dual explosions that rocked the Boston Marathon. Breaking news out of Boston. Here is what we know right now. We were on the air seven straight hours live, and it was me alone, alone on the set but not alone because I had our incredible producers and crews and correspondents. But I remember thinking in that moment, oh wow, this is, I have to get this right. I, you know, there's, this is, there's no time for sloppiness or error. I think here's the truth of it. When there's a breaking news story, it is everywhere. So then you have a choice to make. Where am I going to find it? Where do I want to receive it? Where's my place where I can receive it with sort of 
gentle hands. Here it is, you know. And I think that that's why the show stands out because you can certainly get news anywhere you want, at any time you want, but it's not always that you get to sit with someone you're comfortable with. I'd rather someone I love tell me, hey, this is what went down. It's not great, but here's, here's what happened. And we are upstairs on a balcony roof right now. We not only come in with breaking news, but we contextualize it. We, we make it more palatable in a sense because we're going through it with you. I mean, I can't think of a more sacred moment than the morning of 9-11, you know? Uh, I remember saying on the air, it's a perfect day, it's a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful morning here in the Northeast. Let's check the rest of your weather, show you what's going on for today. Nobody had any idea, not just this city would be changed forever. This country, this world was changed forever. We have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. It happened just a few moments ago, apparently. We have very little information available at this point in time. And at that moment, I think we were all one, not just us in the studio, but everybody watching at home, we were trying to comfort each other. And it was a two-way street. Of course, we'll let people know as soon as we have more information as to what actually caused this. And of course, on everybody's mind, who was yeah. might have been hurt as a result of, the, of this terrible, terrible incident. And on that day, I could not have been prouder to have been part of this show. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Since President Harry Truman, the Today Show has been holding politicians' feet to the fire. Over the years, politicians have loved to come to the Today Show because we do have that collegiality and it's a great audience and, and politicians want to reach that audience. But if they come to the Today Show, they can expect a hard question. Well, let's talk about that third person, Ross this, Perot. I told you I was going to be here for 30 seconds. Well, I know, but aren't I great? Report. I'm one of these less contentious reporters who can convince yeah, you to stick around and talk with yeah. me. And sometimes maybe harder than they anticipated. I hear a lot that you are sometimes slow to react. Are you the leader of the opposition in exile right now in the Republican Party? Do you get how bad it looks? I have the transcript of the call. Do you think this was a perfect call? Yeah. Have you known that he's, he is a liar, as you say? Well, absolutely. He Why tells... did you work for him? Savannah, slow down. And when I think about what to ask, I'm thinking about what people at home are wondering. I'm thinking about the question that maybe the politician doesn't want to answer, but people at home really want to know. And I think that's our role. You know, I interviewed President Obama at the White House. If this resolution fails in Congress, would you act without Congress? The, the answer could be yes, 
no, or I haven't decided. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that I haven't decided. Welcome, Mr. President, and thank you for being that here. That was very well stated, I have to say. I did the town hall with President Trump just weeks before the election. So the stakes were really high. We were in the middle of a pandemic and the election was weeks away and it was controversial. That was a retweet. People can decide for themselves. I don't, themselves. I don't the take president. a position. You're not like someone's crazy uncle who no, can no, just retweet no, no. whatever. That was a retweet. I have a pretty little colon. That's it? We are up to the top, mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Yeah. I'll stay up there a little longer. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. The Today Show has a long history of sparking conversations about subjects people usually don't like to talk about and almost never on TV. We lost Frank. I, I want to thank everybody for your love. I'll tell you when I realized the possibilities of the platform. A couple years ago, my, uh, my older brother was, was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer, late, late stage, and, and uh, I went to the powers that be and I said, you know, I, I think we can, we can do some good here. And we profiled him and his treatment and his doctor and, and just colon cancer in, in general. We, we decided to, to shine a light on it. And he ultimately, you know, he, he didn't make it, he died. And during the course of that, during the course of the coverage, because we did a number of follow-up stories as well on colon cancer, not an exaggeration, hundreds of people. I heard from them, whether it's email or on the streets or on the plaza, they would say, hey, I got screened because I saw your story on your brother, or, or I, I, I made my, my husband get screened, or I called my doctor because something went right and I saw your story and I started asking about family history. That's when I realized. Cleveland Cavaliers forward Kevin Love details his bout with a very public panic attack. I was uh, diagnosed with GAD, general anxiety disorder, and mild panic, very similar to what Kevin Love was talking about there. And during the piece, as he was describing his panic attack, I was saying to Craig Melvin, my colleague, oh my God, this has happened to me a million times. And he was like, what, really? He's like, can I ask you about that? And so when we came out of the piece, I first started sharing that I was had been diagnosed for GAD, generalized anxiety disorder, and, and panic attacks. You feel like you're dying. In fact, I went to the hospital, and the first thing you would put it on, I got leads on my chest. I'm like, my heart's going to stop, or I'm gonna have a heart attack. And of course, what happens is you're perfectly fine. From that moment on, it's become something that I've really tried to take ownership of here at the Today Show and NBC News to cre help create that conversation around mental health and help break the stigma of talking about mental health and bringing the stats to life. And you know, I'm somebody that has suffered in silence and there's so many millions of us that do. And I'm really proud of that, the part that I've you know, been able to just kind of share what's worked for me and my struggles. And in turn, it's hopefully helped other people share their story. And that's really what's so important with mental health is to get that conversation going. I do have something to tell you. That little girl, Haley Joy. Yes. I'm crying. I'm crying. She's crying. Um, is my daughter. No! Yay! Yay! Wow! Congratulations! Oh my gosh! I adopted her. And I think no matter what the experience is, whether it's breast cancer or adoption or, you know, getting engaged later in life, whatever it is, I feel like sometimes if, if I get hope from people who do things um, that I feel like are, are difficult at the time. And so I'm, you know, I don't know what I'm providing except for just, you know, kind of telling my business. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. 
listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. The United States, let's go. Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some of my favorite moments on the Today Show had me going places I never really thought I would see or not not the way I got to see them through the show. I got to go visit the Holy Land. And when we walk through these doors, we're going to see Calvary. On the way, we're gonna see Calvary itself. Calvary is where Jesus was crucified, now located inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I knew, I, I always wanted to visit Israel, to go with the Today Show and have access to the places the wisdom of experts. It was a phenomenal professional experience, but it was also a deeply personal and spiritual experience. And good morning from the Sydney Opera House in Sydney, Australia. We I went to Australia, which actually is the place I was born, but I had no memory of it. In all my life, Australia ha held this kind of mystical quality, this other land. And not only did I get to visit the house where I lived when I was a newborn baby, we found the hospital where I was born, we found the room where I was born, and they even found the midwives from that era who basically delivered me. This is the room that you took your first breath in. <gasps> oh my <laughs> god! How does that oh feel? Oh my gosh. I think seeing the very place you were born is not something most people get to do or That's see. True. To get to go back with my mom, this is really special. Special time, amazingly awesome. And to top it all off, to be in the place where it all began for us, <laughs> to be in the room where it all began for us is a memory I will treasure. Love you. We love you. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. The United States, is he superhuman? Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering you <laughs> on. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today, today, today. Today, today is where the games begin. <laughs> Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This is your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, the United Shutdown of America. Look, the pandemic, we were, we were just like everybody else. We were working from home, or we were living at work, I can't figure out which one it was, but we were separated from each other. And you don't realize how much you feed off of each other. It's a little funky looking at this three box, but I'm happy to be sitting in between you guys. I think what connected us was this common mission, this feeling that these are serious times, people are terrified. We have the opportunity to ask the questions of these 
doctors and experts and public health officials. Joining us now from Washington, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. <sighs> Look who it is! That's it! Go! Slow-mo <laughs> run shot! Are we allowed to hug? It's Al Roker! Oh, yes! Yes! Also, when we got back together and we got to see each other again for the first time, when we got to sit next to each other for the first time, when we got to hug each other, we'll never take that for granted again. I didn't fully appreciate how much we were a part of people's lives during the pandemic until folks started returning to the plaza. And you would get like teachers and nurses especially who would say, Craig, thank you. Thank you for helping us get through the pandemic. And I was like, and at first I was like, what do you mean? You mean like the, the doctors who would, no, no, no. Like it was heavy, it was hard. And we would turn on the Today Show in the morning because we knew we'd get the information that we needed. But we also knew that we would laugh and we would smile with you guys. Today Show viewers come here every single day to propose, to, to wave to friends and family, to hold up signs, to share messages, to be with us. Um, and that is a huge, huge part of the recipe of success for the show for 70 years. Like we can't do this without the people who come down here to the plaza and our viewers nationwide. The show really first got going. It was in a window on that same side of the street on 49th Street and and everybody would stop by. It was it was it was like we had taken the the beauty and the majesty and the mystery of television because if you got to remember again back at that time people would literally stand in front of appliance stores and watch TV through the glass. Well now they could come and watch TV through the glass and the TV was watching them. Well, what part of our cast is you, uh, you the public at least. See, we're in a big glassed-in kind of fishbowl here. We can look out the window, as you see, and see the people who are looking in at us anytime. And we see all sorts of fascinating folks from home out there, and sometimes they stand out there and look at us and wave at the folks back home. Here we are, TikTok, the interweb, the tweeter, all that stuff. But you know what? People still like to be seen on TV to the folks back home. There's the beauty of it. In 1952, people were waving and the TV camera was panning them. And here we are in the 21st century and people are still waving and holding up signs and hoping that somebody back home sees them. How great is that? The audience is the heart of this show, whether they're at home or whether they're in our plaza or whether they're peeking through our window. The audience is the beating heart of this show. It's literally why we get up in the morning. People have made the Today Show part of their mornings and part of their lives and part of their families for decades. You'll meet people who say, my grandma watched the Today Show, my mom watched the Today Show, now I watch the Today Show, my kids watch it with me. People who watch the Today Show feel like their family. And guess what? We feel like your family too. I've always felt like an audience member because that's what I feel feel like I am a lot of the time. Like when I walk out, I think I would be doing that. I would be coming to 30 Rock. I'd hold up a sign. I know my mom would. She'd be out there with a sign. So I think when you look out and you see like bright shining faces of, of people who've waited, you know, for this magical moment, it's so um, like incredibly satisfying and beautiful to share in it. Like, that's what I feel like when I walk out. I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to find out, like, who's here. So what, bring, what brings you to the Today Show? Well, I mean, this, we've always wanted to do this, and um, Today Show is a part of our life. We've and been watching it every day for seven years when we met, so, yeah. so from a boat. Yeah. <laughs> Super fans. <laughs> My name is well, President. good morning, Barbara. Barbara Walters, the Jane Paulies, the Katies, the Merediths, they blew the doors open, and then me and Savannah just strolled through. We're like, hey, thanks. And we are kicking off the year right because Hoda is officially the co-anchor of today. Oh. Hoda, you are a partner and a friend and a sister, and I am so happy to be doing this. Well, there's no one I'd rather be sitting next to in 2018. A woman stopped me with her child, and she said, thank you, because now my daughter thinks this is totally normal. 
To me, the Today Show is the gold standard. The producers, the crew, the staff, everyone who puts this show together, far more than the people you see on TV, they are the best of the best, and they pour themselves into it every day and every night. People tune in because they know what they're going to see is reliable, it's accurate, it's well-produced, it's curated, it's important. We won't waste your time. And I think that's why the show continues to be relevant. It's that, and then it's also that hopefully people feel a connection and feel a bond with the people on set who are sharing the news with them. I mean, in a way, I. I I feel like it, it's different than some anchorman voice of God telling you what's going on in the world. I feel like we are coming on together and we are informing, but also processing the news with our viewers. And there's a connection there. And to me, that has stood the test of time and is what will continue to stand the test of time. People have tuned in and the people who brought them that news will have changed. But the mission has it, to find out that the world is still there and get them ready for their day. Here's the thing about life, okay, for all of us. Every single working environment, family, group, has days that it's bright and shiny and there's nothing better. And we also have days when we're on our knees. And that's the way life goes. That's the way it goes and you just ride the waves. And I feel like that's how you have to navigate just life in general. And we navigate it at work. Some days are the best day ever. And some days you wonder like what in the heck's going on? But no matter what, you adjust your sails and you go because we got a long road. We're only 70. I mean, like we're babies, you know, goo goo. We got a long way to go. I think Dave Garraway and everyone that started this little project in black and white would be astonished and amazed, and I hope they'd be proud. Thank you. Goodbye until tomorrow morning. Peace. This morning, best-selling cookbook author and chef, our friend Padma Lakshmi. That's right. Her latest cookbook is out right now, and it's called Tomatoes for Neela. And this morning, she's got some great ideas to share for healthy winter dishes. Padma, <clears throat> first of all, it's great to see you. And the ingredient we're starting with that we're focusing on is kale. It's like one of those superfoods. Yes, that's right. It is kale. I love kale. I try to throw it in every dish I have because it's a great hearty but healthy winter uh, green. You know, what I love about kale is that it's great raw, it's great wilted with dressing the next day. It's also wonderful cooked. It has a ton of vitamins, Hoda. It has vitamin A, it has vitamin C, folate, it has vitamin B, vitamin K, it has a ton of antioxidants. It also has omega-3 uh, fatty um, acids, calcium, potassium, you name it. Ooh, hey, Ways you can use this hearty, hearty winter green. So I have two kinds of kale here. This is curly kale, mm -hmm. which you guys probably are familiar with. There's lots of uh, different types of kale. And then I have this, which is called dragon kale. Dragon kale. Kale. Uh, in Italian, it's called lacinato kale. Mm -hmm. And this is the kale that I like the best. You just want to take the center stem and strip that off and then just chop it. What I like to do is buy the kale whole, take, wash it, dry it on kitchen towels, take that center stem off and chop it up, and then put it in a bag and leave it in my crisper so it's always ready oh. for me to throw into um, all my soups and salads. You know, sometimes those lettuces are great. Mm -hmm. You don't finish your salad, you have to throw out the salad. Whereas if you have a salad made with kale, mm. instead of those lettuces, which are mostly water and are still great, but don't have the same nutrients, you can have that salad for two or three days. Hey, Padma, some people, I hear some people massage the kale. Mm -hmm. do you, did you do that? Uh, I don't massage the kale. I just chop it fine. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't fancy. All right, so, so what, are, what are we making? 
what I'm doing. We're going to bounce around with some recipes just because I'm cooking here. So I have sauteed some just plain yellow onion mm -hmm. with a little cumin seeds and some oil and two red chilies. You see that? Uh -huh. Those are sauteing and to that I'm going to add some minced ginger mm. and some minced garlic and that is going into some lentils also called dal which we'll make in a minute but I just want to get that going. Um, so it browns and cooks nicely. To that, I'm adding a little bit of ground turmeric. You see that? I feel like I'm doing one of those beauty Instagram <laughs> And so I'm going to saute this and let that go. And while that's going, I'm going to show you this salad. Look at this beautiful Yum. salad. Ooh. The mozzarella? Chickpeas. Ready Chickpeas. on today's show. Uh, for you guys a while back on another holiday season. It's just simple. Pomegranate, pearl mozzarella, the mm. mint, some serrano. Mm. It's dressed so basically with just olive oil, balsamic, and lime juice. I'm going to take that salad and I'm going to add a bunch of chopped kale to it. And this salad then becomes more hearty yeah. and it lasts much longer than any other salad would. And it's filling. Frankly, this would make a great lunch to take to the office or to school the next day. Um, my daughter, Krishna, takes this salad when she's got a field trip and she's the envy of all her mm. teachers. That What's the like dressing that. on that? Yeah, and the dressing will wilt the um, kale so that it'll be beautiful the next day. All the juices mm -hmm. from the mozzarella and the pomegranate season that kale with the dressing. And look how beautiful that is. Mm. It's don't, you also love the, don't you love the kale? Because it, it even wilted or even chopped up like that, it holds up against yeah. the dressings and sauces. It, it stays robust and doesn't wilt away. Exactly. Now you can see how these onions and ginger and garlic are frying and breaking down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got about 10 or 15 seconds. I would add pancetta to yeah. that, but that's me. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some tomato to that. Uh -huh. And here I have some yellow lentils. Oh, that yum. I love Look at those. Those. Salt. I'm adding kale to that. Uh -huh. hey, like, I want that. this. I want this for me breakfast. Too. A stew, which is yum. basically yum. But you could do chicken or beef, and I'm adding kale to that. Love it. There you go. Thank you, Padma. 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 We got to run. Yummy. We got to run. But all of these dishes are going to be on our website. Looks real good. Today.com slash food. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal, Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's hey, an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? Cookbooks. 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight, where two chefs go head-to-head -head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up uh, yeah. early. What yeah, we, what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very, very comforting. And it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's gonna be rigatoni 
It's gonna be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rabe, and some tomato sauce, a little vodka sauce there as well. So I'm gonna start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, in some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million times in the Today Show, lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sausages that I've cooked off a little bit, some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most classic Italian-American pasta dishes is pasta a la vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pink sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do to it? Question. What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce, so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> oh. so, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the with the hot Italian sausage, and then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce. I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna we're gonna cover the uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm gonna add some fontina cheese to it. Yum! And this is all gonna go into a casserole dish. And mm. I love cooking things. I, you know, I call it oven to table, where you where you you know you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven proof dish like mm -hmm. this one. So Bobby, did you, did you cook that pasta al dente because it's gonna be cooking longer in the oven? Yes, that's actually, Hoda, that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked, so maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce, it's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees, and on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, the Bobby, oven, how do you keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there, it's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, and that's actually a good thing. It's like you know, like when you have the lasagna and the and the, and the edges and the crispiness mm -hmm. on around the side. What do you always want that part of it? You get, you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for I don't know about 15 to 20 minutes. Because don't forget, the pasta is already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up, and then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to Whoa. broil. Mm -hmm. Pour yourself up and cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your uh, take out your your pasta, and you can see this is what it's gonna look like. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, I hope that's what I'm that's talking about. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make sure. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Man, make Bob, make it about this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take a like, take a little bit and just try to kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that, nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Just look at that. That's I mean, good. after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, which is insane. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, does, I don't know, does your, does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in LA is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. Oh, yeah. actually, Carson, you know what? You, you've actually done your research because Christi Christina does not eat meat. I know that. So yes. if you get the sausage out of here, she's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture of her there as well. <laughs> well, he, last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah. And then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, so she's yeah. a lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely you lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because you know I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life, and uh, you know we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened the Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well, 
And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm-hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. We'll All right. Well, thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration be. Excitement is in the air. Superhuman. Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. Uh, Kayla, we are cheering you on. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today. 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 Today is where the games begin. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're back with Today Food, and this morning we're going to put a healthier twist on a classic comfort dish. That's right, the one and only Gianna De Laurentiis joining us this morning ahead of the premiere of her new Food Network show, Simply Giada. She's going to cook up some of her favorite light and flavorful, flavorful recipes on the show. She's going to do it for us this morning as well. Always good to see you, Giada. Good morning. Hey, Hi, kiddo. guys. Good morning. <laughs> Let's Really quickly, though, how are you and Jade doing? We noticed on Instagram... That, that you two were social distancing. All, all is okay now? <sighs> we were, yes, yes, all is okay now. Jane had COVID and I was trying to avoid COVID. Listen, but, lot, yeah. Good plan. A lot of people can relate to that. I feel like I should have just let it go. Yeah. But yes, yeah. we're all set. We're all better now. Good. Well, we're glad we're doing well. We know, listen, nothing can stop you from, from cooking. Uh, and with so many of us at home, Never. we need your help. What are your thoughts on, let's do tonight's dinner. What's on the menu? <sighs> So chicken mayonnaise is um, uh, for dinner tonight. So I think most people know what chicken mayonnaise is, but basically chicken cutlets, count it thin, or you can buy chicken cutlets at the store, and I'm lightening them up. The whole idea of Simply Jada that airs this Sunday is that I'm basically all the recipes are inspired by my cookbook that came out mm, about a year ago, I Eat Better, Feel Better. So it's about eating better and not skipping on flavor. So we're taking the chicken, we seasoned it with salt and pepper, we're putting it in um, brown rice flour, which makes this dish gluten-free and really lightens it up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So you dredge in a little bit of brown rice flour, then a little bit of beaten egg, and you season all of the ingredients, the mm-hmm. flour, the egg, with a little bit of salt, and panko breadcrumbs, but we're going to use gluten-free breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. They give it a nice, crispy sort of crust on the chicken, but they also make it gluten-free for everybody. So it's a little easier on your tummy. You so know? you're kind of double so dredging it's a great way to eat. I'm dredging it, yes, mm. in a little bit of the breadcrumb mixture. And then what we do is we come over here to the pan, and I've already got one now sort of cooking away. I put a little bit of olive oil in the pan, and you can use avocado oil, safflower oil. Um, the olive oil just gives it a nice golden crust, as you can see. And we just cook this in here for about a couple of minutes. Yum. We get this nice golden crust. And then I love to serve it with a little bit of arugula on top and um, just some fresh lemon right over it. And that's basically dinner. And it makes it really satisfying without skipping on flavor, but really good and clean. And I have to tell you, it's pretty simple. You know, sometimes we get these recipes where, you know, I want to do it, but there's a lot involved. This is something that everybody can do. Yeah, and you know what? 
honestly, you could even make it earlier in the day and pop it in the oven at about 250, 200, warm up the chicken. You can make a sandwich out of it, or you could just reheat it and eat it for dinner. I was so going to say, for leftover, with leftovers, Jada, that thing looks like it would be a fantastic mm -hmm. on, a, on a hoagie or something like that with a little tomato sauce. <laughs> Yes, on a hoagie, for sure. That'll, that'll kind of that lighten runs, it up. That runs wouldn't counter. That, wouldn't that yeah. lighten it up? I mean, that, that actually might lighten it up, Al, but okay. Runs counter oh, to what yeah, she's yeah, trying yeah, to do yeah. here. All oh, right. <laughs> Jenna, really quick, how long on each side did you cook that? Um, I cooked it about four minutes on each side, but it kind of depends on how thin your cutlet is. I mm. pounded my chicken breast because I couldn't find any cutlets yesterday. But um, if they're really, really thin, it only takes like two, three minutes on each side. So it's very, very, very fast dinner that is really quite scrumptious. Because who doesn't like fried chicken? That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. But a lightened up version. Hey, Jada, Jada, what would you serve with that the, mm. uh, out of the cookbook uh, that's a little lighter that you normally wouldn't uh, have lighter? You mean um, alongside it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like you could do a quinoa or a ground rice um, on the side of it. You could use, you know, like a tomato sauce. You could add tomato sauce to the ground rice or to the quinoa to add more flavor. Oh, that's good. Um, mm. So it would almost be like a chicken farm, but not really, but right. sort of on the same flavor profile. Um, so I like to do that with gluten-free pasta. Jane really likes it with gluten-free pasta. Yeah. I mean, she really likes it with regular pasta, but yeah. when we're kind of lighting things up, we use gluten-free. Gianna, right. thank you. Thank you so much, as always. Happy New Year. Hey, to see you guys. We were here in the guys. studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, which that chicken we're here in the studio as well. <laughs> you can find the recipe on today.com slash food, by the way, and be sure to check out Giada's new show on Food Network, All Simply right. Giada. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of a COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens. Wherever you are, it's here now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. You know the saying, mm. chicken soup is good for the soul, especially in the cold months. And someone who loves chicken soup so much he makes it for his family all the time is celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen. Right now he's in his kitchen. He's at home in Florida. Hey, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm sorry I'm in Florida. It's 50 here, but I, I know it's really cold there. You know, that's know. Just We didn't cruel. know you lived in Florida, and now we're kind of angry at your jealous. tan. Look at your tan. I know. I'm, I'm tan all the time. You know that. Anyway, <laughs> everybody loves a good chicken soup, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a mashup, right? I'm doing a chicken noodle ramen mashup, mm. and the reason why I like it is you talk about healthy eating, New Year, really delicious, but also yummy. I mean, food has to be yummy. I don't know about you guys, but yes. if it's not yummy, I don't want it. But look at this. Look at all these gorgeous vegetables. Mm. That's right in the market. Beautiful. There's nothing fancy here. Carrots, parsnips, some onions, some leeks, some great herbs and ginger. And it's very simple. So let's start with our vegetables. OK, so we're going to make sure our vegetables are cut evenly. Why? Because they cook evenly. Really important. Oh, but all a soup the same size. Is that makes sense. All yes. the same size. A soup is so easy. Just follow these techniques and you're going to be very, very happy. And, and the addition to making this soup is you get leftover stock that you can freeze. Okay, we're gonna take our celery, our carrots, we're gonna just cut them on the bias like this, very simply, and it's very easy once they're lined up together to make sure they're, they're the same the size, same. real yeah. easy. So we've taken our leek and um, what you make sure you cut it open and you wash it because there is dirt in there mm -hmm. and just follow the same yeah. methodology. Just a nice 
probably this is quarter inch. I'm just guessing quarter inch. But everything's going to be ready at the same time. So it shouldn't take that long to cook a proper soup. The stock takes the most time. It's like cooking the chicken takes about like an hour. Now parsnips. I love parsnips, guys, because they have a sweetness that is just uh -huh. yeah, remarkable. Crispy. So, hey, Jeffrey, crispy and Jeffrey, yummy. Why, why leeks instead of like another kind of onion? Here's a tip. Leeks have less sulfur than an onion, so your stock stays lighter. It doesn't darken. You know, sometimes it oh, yeah. turns oh. really brown, and I use leeks. It's a little secret of a chef. Okay. All right. So are you ready for the big ready. deal? Yes, let's, let's cook, cook a chicken. chicken. Yes, sir. Very easy. We have our veggies. We're going to go over by, by the – my beautiful wife is holding the camera. She's the camera person today. So we have a pot, a very big pot, and we're going to put it on high. And we're using a four-pound chicken just like this. Use a tongue so you don't have to touch the chicken. And just put that right in there. All right? And then another secret, guys, chicken wings. Oh. Tons of gelatin and tons of meat. There's tons of meat on chicken wings. We're going to put those wait, in. Wait, and then, okay, sorry. You wait, had us until wait, you said wait, the word wait, gelatin. for a second. What does that gelatin. mean? Gelatin. Gelatin. Gelatin is that stuff, that umami you taste when you smell soup that your uh -huh. mom's cooking or your grandmother cooked. <laughs> And the schmaltz is the chicken fat. So all that together right. is loaded in those chicken wings. And then chicken word. stock. Now, you just cover this. Notice no water, no salt, no pepper, nothing at all, just chicken stock. Mm. You could use water, but I like to get it up just a bit, just jab it a bit. And I put a touch of white wine vinegar or Ooh. wine. You don't have mm -hmm. to. Just a little acid. Now, we're going to let that chicken go for about an hour. Once it comes out, we're going to put it on a rack and let it cool, and then we're going to take all the delicious yes, chicken off. peel it, it off. So, you take the bones out? Or you, yeah. I right? take the bones out, everything. Okay. And then we have our beautiful stock. And remember those veggies we cut perfectly? Yes. I know you know how to do that now. Yeah. All right? We're just going to slide that slide in there. Away. And magic, a couple of peas. You take frozen peas. Oh. I think this is going to probably take 10 minutes. You have all the flavor there. The miso is really special. The miso is soybean paste. It gives a little saltiness. It's really, really delicious. Where's so the ramen? We, the ramen. Ah, where's the ramen? It's coming. All right. So remember, we have our soup. Our beautiful veg, our vegetables are in there. Mm -hmm. And like, can you get in there, Margaret, and take a look at that? How Pretty. gorgeous that looks. Margaret. Shot, Margaret. Oh. Yeah, good shot. Are no. you ready? Okay, yeah, we need the ready. ramen, though, because we came for the ramen. Yes. You came for the ramen. So we're going to take a big bowl. I like to serve this in giant bowls. I have our pre-cooked ramen. This is beautiful whole wheat ramen. I just oh, put that in the buy, bottom. Where do you buy whole wheat ramen? Anywhere? Uh, there's tons of it. Tons of it. Oh. You can use regular, but I like the whole wheat, right? Yeah, it's and now better I'm gonna, for you. Now we're going to have some fun. Now we're doing the mashup part, right? Oh. We're going to pour this glorious, healthy, Ooh, gorgeous soup ramen. on top. Look at that. Yum. Full ramen. That. Takes me back to my college yes. days. Yep. Right, and then some Sprinkle chicken. Now I choose to put the chicken mm -hmm. on oh, the chicken just like this. I don't put the chicken in the stock because I don't want it to get overcooked. And a lot of people store their chicken Neither in the stock. Yeah. And, yeah. And what happens? It gets overcooked. And now the secret. Now we have fun. Now we have our scallions. It's uh -huh. going to be like we're making a fro. Press it up. Yes. We're going to put some some beautiful pea shoots, some scallions, some bamboo shoots. Have fun here. I'm using whatever I found at the uh, at the farmer's market uh -huh. uh, or at the grocery market. Some radishes. radishes. Ooh. Oh, ginger. Jeffrey, Jeffrey guys, thank you. We got to roll, Jeffrey. It looks so yummy. It really does. You did great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bon appetit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Margaret. Tell your daughters hey. All right. All right, guys. For this recipe, Bye. head to today.com slash food. <laughs>10 days into the new year and if you're already finding it hard to eat healthier or you haven't even started yet guess what here's your monday motivation it's never too late always okay start on monday. we can always count on today nutritionist and our pal joy bauer to whip up something healthy and delicious joy a lot of people we didn't get a real reset so we're res re resetting today so what do you have for us today I am so crazy excited to show you how to make this meal i think it's going to be on repeat in both of your homes and it's super Kid friendly. Okay. So this is a turkey bolognese. Mm. It's obviously it's healthified. It's packed with protein, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. But I'm telling you the best part, it is a one pot wonder. And I think you're gonna be amazed how easy this thing comes together. Okay, and you've so, decided to swap beef for turkey. Is that because it's a little leaner? Starting. That's what you're supposed to do? That's right. Yeah. So here what this is a pound of lean ground turkey. And when you shop for it at the store, look for 
turkey that is between 90 and 94 percent lean because it's still going to be flavorful and juicy if you get up to the 99 percent lean it's too dry so between 90 mm, and 94 percent after this was already cooked what i've done is i threw in you can see here all the vegetables i have diced celery red bell pepper onion and carrots and i saute it with the meat but ah. because i want to save a little bit of time because I'm going to nail this thing before we close the spot. Okay. I pre-sauteed all of the yummy vegetables, and now we basically have a nutrition party in this pot. Okay. We now take, this is a 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Oh, wow. One yeah. cup of broth, whatever you have in the fridge, mm -hmm. and I'm going to take another easy way out, and instead of dealing with separate seasonings, I have here just five teaspoons of Italian seasoning. So this adds Ooh, oregano mm -hmm. and basil and thyme. Yeah. And then I'm stir this whole thing up. I'm going to put it on the stove. Let it cook for about 25 minutes covered. Can you I ask, uncover it. Can I ask one question, Joy, shift. just to be clear? Yeah. So the turkey was already cooked, and you, uh, if you were just starting from scratch, you'd put in the raw turkey and all the veggies at together the at the same time and saute. No, I would. I, I'm so glad you asked that. No, so first what I do is I, in stages, I cook the ground turkey first, By and itself. it takes about six minutes, right? And I'm just sort of chopping it up. When the ground turkey is cooked and there's no more pink, then I throw in the veggies. Oh. We're building, and it's another six to eight minutes. Okay. And then you you throw Ooh, in everything else, that. and look at this. That looks like a sloppy and joe. <laughs> Mm. So, you know, okay. it's interesting that you say that, Hoda, because I actually like to put it on toasted English muffins Ooh. or in soft like Portuguese buns. Oh my goodness. So now I'm going to take this pasta. Now yes, what is you this can pasta? eat whole, yeah. This is a whole grain pasta. Yeah. And for people that are sensitive to cutting back on carbs, you can use zoodles, which are zucchini noodles, or you can also do spaghetti squash. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, I have over here some parm because you guys know everything's better with a little oh, bit of yeah. parm. Oh, oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. By Is the way, this amazing? I've seen some chickpea, like some other kind of flour pasta. Are those better for you? That's what this is, actually. Oh. So I said it was a whole grain, but if you opened up my cabinet, I have true whole grain, which is just 100% whole wheat. But I also have so many different brands of like chickpea or bean or lentil pasta. I would suggest people experiment around. It has a little bit more protein and it has a little bit more fiber. It really depends mm. on what you prefer in terms of your taste. One other thing I'm going to do as soon as we um, shut down the segment, yeah. I'm going to try to make a bolognese burrito. Oh, I'll yes. let you know how it works out. I'm going to put it in a wrap. Yes, with a yes. lot of cheese on it. We love a bolognese then... burrito. Yes! Joy, yes! Joy, yes. we miss you. We miss you. Oh, it's good no. to see you, though. To get this recipe, head to today.com slash food. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to our first Read with Jenna book club discussion. I am so excited to be here with all of you to talk about our January book club pick, The School for Good Mothers. And I am thrilled that Jasmine Chan, the author of this riveting novel, is joining me to take us behind the scenes of the process of writing this incredible debut. Jasmine, thank you so much for being